Watching Ren's hand deftly connect cables and unscrew plates was kind of attractive. But I wasn't about to say anything. I'll say something. Your hands look great. Would you like to take your fingers and put them somewhere else? <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to 14 Days With You, Day 4. This is the Yandere dating sim in which you meet a man named Ren who seems to already know who you are. Let's get started. I'm so excited for day four. Welcome back, guys. Oh, I think this is a new background as well. Rainbow bandages, a red tunnel, blue eyes. That's all I can seem to recall from my dream as the blaring of the alarm pulls me from my slumber. Almost groggily, I reach for my phone to turn it off and flop back onto my bed. Curious. I glance at the screen to check the time, only to get blinded by the brightness of my wallpaper. My room is so pretty. I wish I had a TV like that, but then I'd never leave my room. Ugh. Wincing at the bright screen that practically flashbangs me, I crack one eye open to read the numbers on the screen. 9.05am. Oh, so it wasn't too early then. I still had plenty of time to get ready for the day, and possibly make some waffles for breakfast. The batter would expire soon anyway, and I really didn't feel like visiting the bakery this morning. With that plan in mind, I let out a sleepy groan and roll out of bed. Muscle memory kicks in, and my immediate reaction is to open the blinds to some much-needed sunshine. But when I glance at my windows, they were already pulled back. Sunlight had been pouring into my room for who knows how long, and I didn't even notice. When did I open them? Did Ren open them? And wait, the, did he leave? I knew firsthand that he liked to wake up early, yet even after straining my ears, I couldn't hear him rattling about in my lounge room. Admittedly, I thought Rem would have wanted to stay the night after we... The heat rushes to my face, as I recall what we did last night. No, it wouldn't do me any good to think about that first thing in the morning. I could always text Ren later. After all, it was still early, and I didn't want to seem clingy. Would he even think I'm being clingy? Ugh, this was not what I needed to start my day with. Deciding not to dwell on it for now, I stand up and gradually work out the kinks in my body. No way was I going to let this ruin the outing I'd planned with Teo, Eleanor, and Leon. Oh yeah, I almost forgot, we were supposed to go to the aquarium today. With that in mind, I make a mental note to dress appropriately as I walk over to my closet. Absent-mindedly, I run my fingers across some of the clothes before pulling something cute from the rack. I'm actually really excited to see how the tension between Ren and Teo develops. I'm so keen. My usual style has never let me down before, so I decide to stick with the theme and wear something similar. I pick out a few more matching pieces and accessories before giving them all a cursory glance. Feeling satisfied with the items I chose, I nod in approval before heading to the bathroom to change. I doubt the hot water would work this early in the morning, so having a nice refreshing shower was definitely out of the question. Well, not that it really mattered, I still needed to buy some more shampoo anyway, and oh, strange. Was my toothbrush holder always the solid black color? I could have sworn it was gray. Picking it up from the shelf, I give it a once over. The Haruko print was still there, yet it somehow felt heavier in my hands. Wait, what? But then again, I don't exactly go around meticulously measuring how heavy my items are in the first place. Ren, did you take my did you take my toothbrush holder and for what reason? Jeez. Today was seriously a day of overthinking, huh? Well, whatever. Putting the holder back on the shelf, I focus my attention on the reflection of myself in the mirror and give an appreciative nod. The outfit I chose looked perfect, and once I put everything on, all I'd have to do was decide on how I should style my hair. Hmm, what should I do? Um, my hair is long. I have straight hair? An idea comes to mind and I immediately set to work. I'm really liking how the backgrounds are looking. I don't know if it's just because I haven't been in the game for a while, but something about it looks a bit more like well lit and more high definition. It's very pretty. An hour flies by and I've somehow managed to get dressed, style my hair, and finish breakfast in record time. With nothing else left to do, I decide I might as well kill time in my entryway by picking out which shoes to wear. But just as I stop in front of the shoe rack, something near the front door catches my eye. A letter. Odd. My door doesn't have a letterbox, so I usually visit the front desk to collect my mail. That is, if Violet doesn't bring it up for me. So what was this doing here? Curiosity gets the better of me, and I find myself scooping up the letter and, and opening it. Inside was nothing more than a folded note written in red ink, and... Was that a lock of dark blonde hair? What? What? Who, who do we know has dark blonde hair? Eleanor? What the? Did this belong to... Kiara? Oh no. 
A chill runs down my spine once I realize what exactly this item is, and I hesitantly scan the rest of the note for answers, but it simply read, I think she might need a new lock as well, don't you think? And don't bother warning her about this. I'll know. Let's keep this between us, alright? It'll be our little secret. What the hell? Was this somehow tied to the arsehole who broke into my- Was this somehow tied to the arsehole who broke into my apartment a few days ago? Or was it someone else entirely? Though admittedly, whoever this stalker was, they were honestly doing a pretty bad job at making their intentions clear. I mean, what exactly were they trying to accomplish by doing this? Do they want me to stay away from Kiara as well? Or just keep silent? What did they get out of blackmailing me like this? And why target Kiara specifically? None of this makes any sense. And now that I give it more thought, I still wasn't sure what they wanted from me. Why go through all this trouble in the first place? It wasn't like I was doing anything wrong. Maybe moving back to the bay wasn't such a good idea after all. I mean, I left the hardships and turmoil of the city behind for a reason. I wanted fresh air, new faces, and a more easygoing lifestyle, things I'd never get in the city. And now it seems like history is only repeating itself once more. I thought I could live a peaceful life here with my new job and friends, and now I've somehow found myself in more trouble than I could ever ask for. And what's worse is that after denying my own paranoia for so long, this was all it took to convince me that my potential intruder really was real after all. Shit. Maybe Violet was right. I remember brushing off her concerns because the idea of a stalker seemed so far-fetched to me, especially given Cole and Bay's innocuous reputation, but now... <sighs> Admittedly, a big part of me wanted to see if Violet was still home. Another part kept me rooted in place. What if the intruder was still lurking outside? Ah, suddenly, my phone goes off and scares the living daylights out of me. So much so that I end up dropping it on the hardwood floor and clambering to pick it back up. Oh shit! With shaking hands, I forgo looking for any dents and cracks on the screen as I try to discern the reason for the noise instead. The letter T shows up where the caller ID should be, along with a suggestive contact photo of someone's abs that I don't remember taking. Which could only mean one thing. Well, I mean, at least it wasn't his peanuts. <laughs> that seems like such a tear thing to do as well. Just take a picture of his, like, whim-wham, his, his schlongus. Tear was calling. It takes a few failed attempts, but I somehow managed to press the answer button and respond with a shaky tone. Uh, um, uh, hello? Oh, well, damn doll. You sound like you just woke up. Not planning on sleeping in, are you? Look at his boobs. <laughs> it's just his tits. What? No, I did. Because I'm outside your apartment right now. Your neighborhood looks like shit, by the way. Smells like it, too. Smells like you. Shut up, Tear. Did you seriously call me just to make fun of where I live? I called you to tell you to hurry up. Unless you want to walk to the aquarium. Maybe I should just... Ah, oh, damn it. Well, well, well. If it isn't little Miss Pris by her lonesome. Oh, she looks mad. Tear's voice practically oozes smugness as he taunts whoever it is he's talking to, most likely Violet, before I hear him adjust the phone and continue speaking. Oi, doll face. Hurry up, won't ya? He hangs up before I can mutter out a response. But still, knowing that Tear was downstairs somehow gives me the confidence to leave the safety of my home. Though not before committing the state of my apartment to memory and triple checking my lock. I have half a mind to quickly snap photos of everything to see if anything was still touched in my absence, but I doubt I'd have enough time. Still, if my stalker does decide to come back again, I'd want to know. And now that I'm thinking about photos, this gives me the perfect opportunity to splurge on some security cameras. I've been needing them for quite some time now anyways. With all of this talk of violent crimes, dead bodies and murder happening on the news, and now this intruder, I figured it'd be better to be safe than sorry. So, decided to let Tia suffer, even just a little bit at the hands of Violet. I pull out my phone to scroll through some home security bundles on sale as I make my way towards the lobby. Ooh, I love the new transition screen! Tia ended up being uncharacteristically quiet throughout the drive, and if I were being honest, I appreciated the silence. It was definitely odd not having our typical playful banter, but it also wasn't something I needed first thing in the morning. Did Violet tell him I was having a stalker? He also doesn't seem to be in the mood to be disturbed given how he clenches the wheel with one hand, while the other supports his head against the window ledge like some angsty teen. Or maybe Violet told him off and insulted him and gave him and gave him what he deserved. So I try to settle further into the admittedly comfy seat of his luxury car and focus my attention on the scenery as it passes by. It isn't long before the aquarium comes into view as Tia looks around for a decent place to park. We must have picked a busy day to visit. 
Considering the amount of cars parked both outside and in the reserve parking, the tier seems to have somewhere in mind. Um, I watch as he drives straight past a very clearly labeled no-go zone and pulls up into one of the empty spaces without so much a reaction. Tio! Of course he would! He doesn't even wait for me to get out before he opens his door and walks to the front of the car. Not wanting to be left behind, I quickly follow suit. Jeez, what crawled up his butthole? Tio? I was about to question whether he was allowed to park in the employee zone sign in the first place given how he shamelessly pulls down one of the warning signs and tosses it into a bush. I figured that was my answer. Tio! Don't move, don't move, you spank you! It doesn't take long before he's right by my side once more and ushers me towards the front entrance. I almost stumble over my feet as Tio pulls me along, but not before almost bowling him over as he abruptly stops in front of me. <laughs> Look at that. Almost like a loyal dog, isn't he? Glancing in the direction he was pointing, I see Leon sitting on one of the benches as he absentmindedly watches people go by. Why are you so mean? Why are your tits so big? What size bra do you wear? And once he catches sight of us, he immediately leaps to his feet and rushes over with a wave and a warm smile. Good thing he doesn't bite. At that snarky comment, I nudge Tio with my elbow and send him an eye roll. I doubt he takes any notes of it though, since Leon's arrival takes up all our attention. Hey, -o, you look good, sunfish. You're not so bad yourself, or fish. Hello? <laughs> I'm here too. Eleanor hasn't arrived yet? Scoffing at our playful dismissal, Dio cracks a joint in his neck and crosses his tattooed arms. However, he doesn't seem to stray from his spot, which meant that he still had an interest in our conversation. At his almost childlike reaction, Leon shoots his friend a cheeky lopsided smile before continuing. Eh, I'm sure she's on her way. She said something about wanting to get her steps in in our group chat. Is that why she didn't want Tio picking her up? And actually, I don't know if you realize, but you guys are 15 minutes early. Really? No thanks to Tio speeding, I guess. And what about you? I'm guessing you had to walk all the way here, right? There's nothing wrong with getting in a bit of exercise in the morning. I'm sure Eleanor would agree. And I just got here, actually. Really? Because it looked like you were sitting on that bench for a while. I just, I just sat down. Long enough to stretch your legs, huh? Okay, yeah, so maybe I did arrive half an hour early. But I was excited, it's been a while since I've been to the aquarium. And even lo even longer since you've seen Dollface over here, I bet. Huh? Can you blame me? We've been separated for four years, now we're finally reunited again, must be fate. Ooh, don't let Ren catch you talking like that, Leon. You might you might raise a death flag. <laughs> no, destiny. Oh, you, you, had, you, had, you had so done your rings. Playing along with Leon's dramatics, I lean against the side and clutch at the spot above my heart. Ah, it's written in the stars. <sighs> you guys are genuinely so embarrassing. Hearing Tio huff once more, Leon and I both watch as he tries to distance himself by looking at the posters on the wall, no doubt feigning interest in it. It wasn't like Tio really cared much for marine life. All his world revolved around was wealth and luxury, giant tech companies, and probably starting fires. Yeah. Definitely starting fires. Though, for a guy who spent most of his time in the shadow of his father's legacy, I had to hand it to him. Tio was seemingly more down to earth than the other people I'd met. He didn't have to spend time with us, but he did. And as much as he'd often joke about not wanting to affiliate himself with people outside of his tax bracket, Tio sure seems to hang out with Jay, Leon, and me. I wonder, does he ever feel lonely? Before my thoughts can delve any further, I feel a gentle nudge at my side. Looking to my left, I see Leon peering at me with a curious expression. Y you know, I'm really glad you came, but I'm also, I'm honestly surprised you agreed to this. Surprised? What do you mean? Well, you know, is Ren okay with this? Ren? The guy we met at the pier the other day he said something about being your boyfriend? Oh, right, my boyfriend. Whether or not it was because I wanted to stake my claim over Ren, or because he confidently declared himself as my boyfriend a few days ago, I couldn't help but let it slip. But Leon seemed to pick up on the hesitance laced within my words, given how he inquisitively tilts his head and sends me a reassuring smile. <laughs> Is it still a new thing for you? I'm sure calling someone your boyfriend must take some time to get used to. Take things at your own pace. It was strange, hearing this kind of advice from Leon. Especially after practically lying to him, but I wasn't going to say anything. We've been friends for so long, Yet the topic of dating had never seemed to come up between us. Much less something more extreme like settling down or getting married. At that, I recall a fond memory from my youth. 
a younger version of ourselves greets me as they innocently play a game of pretend on the playground. I can see Leon in all his boyish charm as he promises to marry me from atop the slide, before he slides down it and runs to my side with glee. Oh no, Leon's gonna die, isn't he? He seems all too happy to run circles around me while he shouts to the skies about protecting me from bad guys. Yet, something was missing from the scene. Something I couldn't fully remember. What was it? As long as he's chill with us, yeah? I wouldn't want any misunderstandings to happen. Great. I've been spacing out again, not wanting to offend Leon with my silence. I try to make sense of his words before coming up with a sufficient response of my own. Oh, um, yeah, he's, he's fine with it. Probably. Besides, I only agreed to this outing because Eleanor genuinely seemed like she wanted to go. Uh, and it's not like this is a date date anyway, so hey, don't sweat it, Edie. And no need to explain yourself either. I get what you're saying. I'm sure everything- Leon cuts himself off when he knows there's something behind me. And when I turn around to look, I see Eleanor running up to the group with a flushed expression on her face. But as she draws near, she clumsily trips on a stray piece of cobble and tumbles forward. Ah! Without thinking. I lurch forward to close the gap between us, but Tio's muscular arm beats me to it. Tio, you stay away from her right now. You, you take your boobs and go away. Almost effortlessly, he reaches out to catch her. Almost like those cliche romantic movies, except not at all. Because Tio was allergic to anything romantic. A fact that's emphasized by the look of pure disdain on his face as he pulls my co-worker to her feet. Eleanor seems to be blissfully enjoying every moment of it. So seeing as she practically clutches onto his bicep while looking up with wide sparkling eyes, oh Eleanor you soft sweet baby. In fact, I doubt she was even aware of our presence with how she stayed rooted in Tia's awkward embrace. Looks like she really fell for him, huh? You're just as bad as Jay with those puns. <laughs> He's rubbing off on me. Come on, let's go see if she's okay. As it turns out, Eleanor really was okay, being cradled inside the arms of Tia. I mean girl, you can, you can have him. <laughs> But the moment only lasts until Leon and I rejoin the group with a knowing smile on our faces. Dear, aptly chooses not to say anything, and out of solidarity, or perhaps future blackmail, neither do we. And soon enough, we all found ourselves waiting in line to buy admission tickets. Eleanor happily takes photos of us while Tia scrolls through his phone, and Leon stands beside me to look at all the colorful fish in the small tanks. This is all rather exciting, don't you think? Really? It's just fish. Oh, come on, mate. Show a bit more enthusiasm, yeah? If you love him that much, wait till you find out what's at the beach. I want to apologize in advance for him. Oh, no, it's fine. I'm I'm sure Tio has other interests that excite him. Fish just aren't particularly one of them. Wanna know what makes me excited? Keep, keep your schlong in your pants. Leon and I both share a look before rolling our eyes. Breaking taillights and slashing tires. Man, you, you are the worst. Just wait till I get you and your tiny waist. Uh, oh, uh, um, wait. Slashing tires? Isn't that illegal? Probably. I'm just messing with you, princess. Loosen up a little. All too quickly, the light-hearted mood gets replaced with something serious as Leon's phone starts buzzing. Recognition flashes across my childhood's friend's face as he looks at the screen before he awkwardly scratches at the back of his neck and points towards the entrance with a slum. Sorry guys, give me a sec. Without waiting for a response, Leon makes a beeline for the front door. After a few seconds, I see his figure emerge from outside the large windows pacing back and forth on the sidewalk as he talks to someone on the phone. Judging by the solemn expression on his face, I can only guess that the call isn't a good one. I sure hope everything's alright. Too caught up in Leon's shift in demeanor, I barely notice how Eleanor's hand gently pushes Tio and I forward so they can speak to the clerk at the front desk. Broad tattoo shoulders now block my view from the window, which causes me to shift my attention back to the present. But Tio doesn't seem to notice my lack of focus. Or perhaps he just doesn't care, as he pulls out a black card from his wallet and leans over me to hand it to the woman behind the counter. He could have gone without the nonchalant smug look on his face. Yes, he could have. But I wasn't about to say anything when he was literally about to pay for my admission fee. I'll say something, this guy. Before I could begrudgingly thank him, Eleanor's excited voice cuts me off. Oh, do you suppose that there'll be shows today as well? I saw some advertised outside. Oh, yeah? I wasn't paying much attention to them. I hope there'll be penguins. Perhaps Leon would enjoy them. What about me? You? Mm, I don't suppose you like sharks. I can hear the clerk chime in with information on the latest hotspots and what shows are playing. 
but I shut it all out when I noticed Leon standing idly near the doorway, still sporting that concerned look on his face. Without missing a beat, I make my way over to his side and spare him an empathetic glance. Uh, I'm real sorry about all that, Uni, but something's come up involving my mum at the hospital. Oh no. Oh no. Is everything okay? Yeah, <laughs> mum's fine. There's some important paperwork I need to fill out on her behalf, you know, since dad's working abroad and all. I'm so sorry, but I really gotta go. I'll try and come back as soon as I'm... Hey, don't sweat it, Leon. Focus on your mother first. I don't miss the way his entire demeanor softens at my concern. Leon looks as though he wants to say something serious, but holds himself back at the very last second. But now I'm stuck third-wheeling Tio and Eleanor. As if to compensate, I end up filling the silence instead. I'm sure I can survive third-wheeling Tio and Eleanor's date alone. Jeez, jeez, I really owe you one. Actually, you know what? Yeah, before I can refuse, Leon shoves a stack of small bills into my palm and closes his hands around it. Hey, you don't have to. Besides, Tia already paid for everything just now. Nah, I won't be hearing anything from you. If you won't accept it, then spend on something for me instead, yeah? Go to town in the souvenir shop. See if they have any sunfish merch in there. Alright, thank you, Leon. No worries, doll, but I really gotta go now. I'll tell mom you said hi. Leon turns on his heel before I have the chance to respond, so he completely misses me waving him off. In his rush, he almost knocks someone over, but he quickly helps them regain their footing and apologizes before speeding off once more. Is that someone, Ren? Man, I sure hope everything's okay with his mother. Before I can dwell on any longer, the sweet melody of Eleanor's laughter pulls me from my and I turn back towards the group. I notice that Tio and Eleanor are now standing by the entrance which also happened to double as a massive underwater tunnel, all while pointing to a school of fish swimming over their heads. When Eleanor notices my presence, she happily waves me over before her attention shifts to the door behind me, no doubt expecting to see Leon walk back in and join us. It made sense considering how they missed his departure, but she snaps out of her curious days the moment Tia brushes a hand against her back to move her out of the way of a family passing by. But what truly shocks me is that he doesn't seem to move his hand. Instead, Tia leaves it there as he steps closer and blocks my co-worker from my view. He meets my gaze with an intense, unreadable expression, and I can't help but to look away. Tia, what do you want? What the, what is what is your problem, huh? Jerk? What was that all about? Suddenly the moment felt too personal for my liking. Almost as if I shouldn't be looking at something so intimate. Turning away. Turning away. I decide to channel my interest into picking out a roadmap from the brochure stand instead. If Tio and Eleanor were planning on getting cozy with each other, I needed to plan my escape route. Before I move away, I notice a lone aquarium tank off to the side. It was far enough from the eyes of people still waiting in the queue, but close enough to the entrance to entice any passerbys to come and take a look. Inside were countless amounts of colourful fish, coral, and other sea crustaceans and I couldn't help but look in awe at some of the bright marine life as they floated about in the water. If only Leon could join us. I could almost hear his laughter at some of the sunfish-like creatures that swim by. Man, I love going to the aquarium so much. It's always so much fun. Keeping the rest of the group in sight, I stray slightly to the right for a better vantage point. A group of neon tetra zip past and my eyes follow them as they swim around. They easily stand out against the bright orange and green corals, and especially the pink and blue. Wait, pink and blue? Oh man, I miss you, you're so cute. Oh my gosh, hi, welcome back, boyfriend. Peeking closer to the glass, I catch a sight of a familiar face on the other side of the tank. Ren doesn't seem to notice me yet, seemingly far too entranced by the brightly colored creatures as they swim by. His soft eyes follow some of the smaller fish as they dart across the tank, before swapping over to the group of guppies swimming past. I want to hold his hand. Suddenly, our eyes meet the moment the fish split up, and I watch as Ren's expression morphs from surprise into a sickeningly sweet look. He tries to say something, but his words come out inaudible due to the glass separating us. I missed you. As if realizing, Ren instead points to one of the fish off to the side before resting his hand on the glass and mouthing something else. I mean, I mean, he can mouth something else later if he wants. I still can't fully understand what he was trying to say. That is, until my eyes land on what he was pointing at. Catching me off guard, I watch in awe as a lone fish swims in between us and captures both our attention. Was that an angelfish? The fond memory from our time at the pier came to mind. 
and I find myself thinking back to when a friend affectionately gave me that nickname. I don't know if it was affectionate. I seem to remember him being really jealous of Leon calling a sunfish, and then he's like, well, angelfish and I are gonna go do something else instead. Oh, you're so cute. And had I known any better, I would have assumed that he was thinking the same thing, given the way his eyes crinkle and soften as the fish's scales shimmer underneath the artificial light. Too absorbed in how picturesque this all looked, I completely miss Ren's swift departure. That is, until he's rounding the corner of the fish tank and taking his place by my side. Uh, hi, Yidi. Oh, hey you. Fancy meeting you here. Oh yeah, fancy meeting you here, Ren. It's almost as if he didn't already know I was coming and just showed up, huh? The first thing I notice is how Ren is tugging at his sleeves again. Though he doesn't seem to shy away from my close proximity, nor seem to mind it as much. Ren, why are you so shy? We literally banged yesterday. This is your pretty neat, huh? It, yeah, I couldn't take my eyes off you, them. He's so cute, I missed him. Hey, did you spot the angelfish swimming by? How you respond? I did, it was so captivating. It, you, it was, huh? I couldn't stop looking at it as well. Yeah, I didn't even know it could be that color. Actually, this might sound cheesy, but after you mentioned the angelfish, it reminded me of our date by the pier, remember? How could I forget? It's one of my most treasured memories, top three in fact. What was the first one? Was it when we were absolutely fandangling your whimwham the other night? Not wanting to let this opportunity pass, I decided to tease around a bit. <laughs> oh please. Top three. Don't laugh. If I, if you get to be cheesy, why can't I? Well, in that case, if you get to give me a cheesy nickname like Angelfish, why can't I? Wait, you want to give me a nickname? Come on, it's only fair. Though to be honest. I don't really know any pink colored fish. Damn it. Oh yeah? That's too bad. Hey, don't think you can get away that easily, buttercup. I'll think of something better eventually. 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 At last, Ren lets out a puff of laughter before returning his attention to the tank once more. It doesn't seem to stray from my side though. And it's then I realize, what was he doing at the aquarium in the first place? Without missing a beat, I step closer and voice my thoughts. You know, I wasn't expecting to run into you here. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, no offense, but you don't really seem like an aquarium guy. <laughs> Is that so? I didn't have any plans for today, so I figured I'd do a bit of under the sea sighting to pass the time. Plus, I finished the book you recommended me the other week, the one about the underwater city. I guess it inspired me to come here. Really? Did you like it? What did you think about it? I enjoyed it, especially the part where- Oh, say, look at that. Ren isn't shy about how he leans over my shoulder to point at something outside of my peripheral vision. I follow his finger, and between the driftwood and coral, I spot Eleanor and Tio standing awfully close together. I don't miss the way Tio sizes up Ren, even from a distance, <laughs> drama, before he tears his gaze away from us with an inaudible scoff. Yeah, jealous? A surprised sound escapes the back of my throat as I watched Tio unabashedly run a hand down my co-worker's side. Whoa! But what truly shocks me is the way Eleanor boldly grabs his arm and loops her hand around it. Honestly, Tio, if you were just going after Eleanor just to like make me jealous, that is a very rotten thing to do. No way. That's... Um, wow. I honestly didn't know she had it in her. And while her confidence shocked me, it also sparked a bout of curiosity inside of me as well. Even though we all established that this wasn't a date, Eleanor still wanted to treat it like one. But now that I really think about it, isn't this similar to the date I shared with Ren at the pier as well? The next thing I know, I find my mind wandering to all the times I held Ren's hand as we walked along the boardwalk. And right now, it looked all too tempting with how it was casually resting against the glass. I could easily fit the palm of my hand in his, and I'm sure I wouldn't mind in the slightest if I were to reach out right now and... No, come on, Yidi, what were you thinking? Although, come to think of it, wasn't I the one who initiated most of the hand-holding during the moments we spent together? Maybe he'd be okay with it after all. Should I hold his hand? Before I can talk myself out of it, I reach out and slip my fingers between Ren's palm and the glass of the tank. His skin feels uncharacteristically coarse and rough against my own. But before I can question it, I brush against something cold and metallic instead. I'm daring a curious peek. I look down and notice a golden ring on one of his fingers. In fact, 
It appeared to look vaguely similar to the one around his neck. As soon as I opened my mouth to ask, Ren casually slips his fingers between my own to entwine them. He gives me a soft smile, almost as if he knew this was going to happen, before Eleanor's voice pulls me back to the present. Yinny, there you are. Ren does not look happy. Why didn't you say anything earlier, dear? He does not look happy. What's going on? Where'd pretty boy run off to? Princess over here said he had to leave earlier. And damn, if it isn't Buttercup. It, it's Ren, actually. Oh, not this again. Before the two can have the chance to butt heads, I carefully step in and interrupt. Um, something came up at the hospital, so Leon had to go. Oh dear, I hope everything is okay. He assured me that everything's fine, so I wouldn't stress too much about it. I watch as Eleanor shuffles on her feet in contemplation before noticing the item still grasped carefully in her hands. That's a relief, but oh, what do you suppose we should do with a ticket then? Shall I ask for a refund? It's fine. Looks like loose change to me. I'll make it back in like 45 seconds. I hate guys like you. You you are the worst. You take your nice hair and your nice face and your incredibly nice arms and very nice titties and go away. Still, we shouldn't let it go to waste. Oh, I know. Eleanor's expression shifts from revelation to something more cheeky as she turns to me with a small knowing grin. She leans close enough to whisper but doesn't seem all that quiet about it. Yeah. Why don't we give the ticket to your lover boy? <laughs> lover boy? You've got to be joking. <laughs> I should I tell you all about how our lovely Yinny has a secret admirer? And how often he rents out their books from the library? E Eleanor! Uh, I feel like I'm missing some context here. Almost hastily, I snatched the ticket from Eleanor's hands and Usher ran inside the tunnel, away from my gossipy co-worker and Tio's smug grin. I hardly notice the time passing with all the fun I'm having, and before I know it, almost two hours goes by in a blur. I'd initially been so fixated on being a third wheel that I completely forgot about the exciting things people could do at the aquarium. Eleanor seemed all too happy to snap pictures of everything, ranging from Ren and I petting some stingrays, Tio getting splashed by a seal, and all the giant creatures that swam around in the overhead tanks. By the time I noticed my feet starting to hurt, we had all made it to the small food court conveniently placed at the end of the main attractions. Eleanor used this as an opportunity to use the restroom, while Tio wandered off to who knows where, so Ren and I were left to look for a place for us all to sit down and rest. But we didn't get far before the light sounds of footsteps drew closer once more. Yinny, Ren, there you are! Sorry for the wait, I ran to Tio earlier while he was talking to one of the tour guides. He's a friend and I wanted to talk to him. He didn't need to wait for me. Uh, oh, but you said you were lost and needed help with something urgent. Oh, come on, princess. No need to act coy. Surely people say the same thing to you at the library, right? Well, yes, I suppose they do, but I don't see what that has to do with me waiting for you. Or acting coy, for that matter. You're adorable when you're clueless. You know what, Tia? You, you stay away. Away from her. I will spray you with water, I will. Uh, um, um, anyway, are either of you hungry yet? It's past noon and I'm worried Tia won't put his pride aside and admit he's hungry. Excuse me? Oh, am I wrong? I could have sworn I heard your stomach growling earlier. <laughs> now he's acting coy. First of all, when did they reunite without me noticing? And secondly, was Tia embarrassed? There was no way I was going to let this opportunity pass. Oh, is the big baby hungry? Didn't eat breakfast this morning, did you? I did. <laughs> Unlike you, I can afford to eat whenever I want. You, 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 you piece of, you piece of crap. You asshole! Though it came out blunt and harsh, I knew Tia was only joking. Hmm, then why don't I go and get us all something to eat? Any preferences? Allergies I should be made aware of? Eleanor, you are too sweet for this world. We do not deserve you. Oh, why do you care, princess? You plotting to kill me or something? Hopefully. It's only natural to worry about the health of others. I wouldn't want to give you something you're allergic to. And besides, everyone deserves to be cared for. <laughs> you're weird. You leave her alone! What was that? I said wasabi. I'm allergic to wasabi. Wasabi, huh? Why would- <laughs> look, at, look at Ren's face when he realizes that he's found out one of Tio's weaknesses. Look, he's like, hmm. I now have something to kill him with. I see. And what about you lot? Any preferences? Do, do you think they have any scones? 
I've been having a really bad craving for it recently. Then, in that case, I'll have the... Before I can voice my preferences. Tio cuts me off by pulling out his wallet and handing it to my co-worker. Eleanor takes it from him without complaint, but pairs it with a curious look and a slight tilt of their head. Get whatever. I need to have a word with Dollface over here. Uh, I didn't get the chance to fully respond before Tio directs me towards the opening of the food court. I barely get three steps away before I feel a gentle tug on my sleeve. Oh no, here we go. Curious. I glance back only to find Ren sporting a pout on his soft features. Relax, buttercup. You get them back in one piece. Now that I think about it, it was kind of out of the blue for Tio to be acting like this. I mean, since when did he ever want to talk about something serious? With that revelation in mind, I offer Ren a reassuring look and give his arm a comforting squeeze. Sure, it'll only be a few minutes. Uh, uh, oh. His eyes flicker between me and Tio a few times before it lands on my hand still resting on his arm and he lets out an inaudible sigh. Uh, okay. I'll wait for you here. No. Stay where Princess can see you. Unless you wanted to freak out and think we ditched. My name is Eleanor, you know. Wow. Amazing. Whatever. Come on, let's go. Without another word, Tio nudges me in the right direction, leaving Ren all alone and confused. I'm sorry, Ren. Following close behind, Tio leads me to a quiet corner near the food court, before turning around and boxing me in with his large arms. Whoa! Hey, yo! Casually leans his weight to one side before finally speaking. Hey, so I got this fun idea. Oh no. Oh no, here we go. Seriously? I thought you wanted to talk to me about something urgent. Damn. Could you be a little less loud about it? As a matter of fact, yes I do. No, you always say, I've got an idea. And it turns out to be something illegal like trespassing or vandalism. Isn't that the whole point of an idea? He was not serious. We're not about to discuss the logistics behind- Look, it's serious. I need you to help me make Ellie or whatever jealous. She's getting a bit too clingy for my taste. And it might even get Buttercup to ease up on that juvenile puppy love shit. You seriously don't think he's being too clingy? He's practically glued himself to your side the entire day. Yeah, well he's my boyfriend. What? Don't you think that's kind of a roundabout idea? How would this even benefit? Trust me. This is for my own benefit, not yours. And why should I help you? Little Miss Princess over there is treating me like I'm a damn child and needs to be supervised all the time. And I can't even tell if she's interested in me or not. Are you blind? Are you missing neurons, dude? What? Plus, you're not exactly... No, never mind. I'm not exactly what, huh? I'm not exactly what, huh, Tio? Say it, I'll crack your balls right now. Either my idea works and this gathering gets more interesting, or she realizes I'm not the type to be babied and backs off. While I had to jump through hoops and hurdles to understand, Tio did have a point. No, he doesn't. But everything about his idea still felt wrong. Playing with people's emotions is wrong, regardless if I agree or not. If Eleanor saw us flirting, wouldn't she just assume that you're not interested in her at all? Besides, I never betray her like that. Who said anything about flirting? Shit, you really are into me, aren't you? Can't say I'm flattered, doll. That's it, we are cracking as balls. Excuse me? All I was going to do was ignore her for a bit, make them think you're more entertaining or something. You know, I do not agree with negging. Tia, you better cut that out. Right now, there's a fire extinguisher behind you. I mean, it almost worked with that tour guide from earlier. And if you want to cling on my arm too, by all means, gorgeous. Go ahead. You are so insufferable. So, is it a yes or a no? I still don't know what you want me to do exactly. Tio's gaze shifts to something behind me before a light ignites in his eyes and he sends me a sly smirk. Just follow my lead. No! I barely have enough time to process his words before Tio places a hand on the small of my back and pulls me closer to his side. His voice is louder than usual, and it's then when I notice Eleanor and Ren slowly coming into view. See that storeroom over there? Looks like it's unlocked. Wanna go check it out? <laughs> the audacity that you have. You're still really hot, but I am going to punch you. What are you- Come on. Like you haven't been fooling around with Buttercup, I can practically smell him on you. All of a sudden, I feel my phone vibrate in my pocket. But just as I move to pull it out, Tio gives me a pointed look and I find myself stalling. How will you respond? I'm not following him inside the storeroom. I'm following him inside the storeroom. With a wink, he leans closer and whispers against the shell of my ear. Smart choice, doll. One of Tio's large hands rests atop the one holding my phone. 
before he uses it to gently tug me along and shut the door behind us. Darkness envelops the both of us as I strain to make out the sound of tears shuffling in order to pinpoint where he is. This is a bad idea. Ugh. I seriously can't believe he wrote me into doing this. This is my side. Don't cross that line. What line? The line I just drew with my fingers. Teo, I can barely see anything in here. Well, almost. Even in my corner of the dark room, I can still make out the faint shape of boxes on the shelves alongside a dirty mop and cleaning supplies that Teo made sure to put me near. Shit, I hope I wasn't standing in anything. But just as I pull out my phone to use the flashlight and check, bright overhead lights flood the confined space as Ren and Eleanor's concerned faces appear from behind the door. Well, that was quick. Ren wastes no time in shoving past Tia to reach for me, only to take his place by my side and pull me into his chest. Because of this, I could hardly see Eleanor or Tia's reaction. Oh, he is so mad. I feel so bad. I feel like a dick. Couldn't you talk to them outside? I can practically hear the venom dripping from Ren's tone as he harshly glares at Tia from over his shoulder. Who goes into storerooms just to talk? Anyway. Talk about clingy. Well, whatever. I got what I wanted. I follow Tia's gaze as he takes in Eleanor's flushed expression before he throws an arm over her shoulder and takes the bag of food from their grasp and guides her out of the closet. I can hear him mumble something about how adorable she looks with a pouting expression as the door shuts behind them. Nothing but silence is left in their wake. And it's then I notice that Ren is still in the closet with me, peering down with an unreadable expression. Are we? Are we gonna do it? Did he hurt you? Do anything strange? No, oh, Tia was just odd. I couldn't help but feel the need to explain myself. He just wanted to make Eleanor jealous, so he suggested going into this closet with him. I swear, nothing happened. Do you like him? What? Do you like Tia? Why else would you agree to... To clarify who he was talking about didn't lessen the confusion bubbling in my brain. And I can hear Ren's grasp tighten around the shelf behind me as he tries to find the words to say. His breath comes out staggered now, and his gaze isn't any less intense. N no, I actually... How will you respond? What happens if you say, I actually do like Tia, you die? <laughs> I like you the most, Ren. Ren lets out a shaky breath as his composure practically melts in front of me. His cheeks flush a deep red and he looks down with an intense, love-struck eyes before he closes them and rests his forehead against my own. But the action was fast fleeting as his head eventually drops into the crook of my neck instead, and his hands remain against the shelf behind me. Me, you really like me the most. Uh, sorry, I need a second. Ren? He doesn't seem to respond. Instead, he simply stays rooted in place while his breath fans against my shoulder. I can almost hear the wooden shelf creak as his grip tightens before he pulls back with a determined glint in his eyes. As long as Tia didn't do anything to you, then... And if he did, I'd kill him. Uh, Ren? Ren? It was like the room got cold all of a sudden. There's an unsettling look on Ren's face before it quickly morphs into his usual soft expression. Was I just imagining things? Just kidding. You were not just kidding. Uh-uh. Something tells me. He really wasn't joking around. Um, Angel. Are you okay? Was that really Ren just now? How do you respond? Dissuade his dark behavior? Encourage, encourage his dark behavior. Making all the dramatic choices this time. You know what? Maybe you should've. I can't really stand people who do whatever they please for their own selfish reasons. I glare at the floor and I recount how Tio had been treating me lately. Like I was something expendable to throw away once he had his fun. Besides, wasn't that what he essentially did? Once Eleanor came in, he didn't look twice before leaving with her. He'd be okay with that. With Tia dead. Uh-oh. Yes. Really? You sure? I'm sure. He stares at me with wide eyes. It almost makes me regret saying anything in the first place. I don't really know what just came over me, but still. Some decrepit and morbid part of me really did genuinely believe that Tia would have been better off at the bottom of Lake Blue Boss. <laughs> I never really let it get to me. But I've honestly had enough to hear with people like him. Those hedonistic individuals who only care about themselves and never the well-being of others around them. Mm-hmm, they agree. Perhaps that's why I moved away from the city in the first place. To escape people like Tia. In some messed up way, at least it brought me closer to someone as understanding and considerate as Ren. Speaking of, I dare a glance back towards my pink-haired companion, only to find him staring back at me with a soft smile. 
He leans in close this time, as if he wanted to whisper something only for me to hear. If I ever need to hide a body, I'll know who to call now. No way you're getting me involved in your crimes. No, but I think it's a genius idea. They'll never suspect the cute librarian. Now that the mood had lightened, I give Ren a playful shove and roll my eyes. Well, now that that's sorted, I think we should leave the stingy storage closet by now, don't you? I mean, we've been in here for a while, and Nori has our food. I suppose we should leave, but I guess there's something sort of comforting about this closet. Or maybe it's just you, huh? Being this close to you. I like it. Yeah, me too. Drop your pants. Where was this coming from? Suddenly, I can hear Ren's arm shift from beside me and move towards my face instead. His fingertips hover close to my cheek. And for a brief moment, I almost find myself wanting to lean into his touch to feel his warmth. But he pulls away at the very last second and instead rests his hands by his side once more. Ren? Uh, I don't want to be a hypocrite. He sends me another soft smile before stepping back and awkwardly tugging on the end of his sleeve. A hypocrite? What did he mean by that? Confused, I pressed him for answers. What do you mean? I came in here thinking Tia was putting moves on you to get a rise out of me. He was, if I'm being honest. Part of me wants to think that he's still outside waiting for us to leave. I kind of... I, I want to... to... Yeah? He covers his mouth with his hands as he awkwardly shifts his weight from one foot to the other. Ren almost looks like he's weighing his options, and I can't tell if it's a winning or losing battle in his mind. All I can do is offer him a reassuring look, to let him know he can speak more freely with me. I mean, we did just have a heart-to-heart -heart about the appropriateness of murder a few minutes ago. But I kind of want to make him jealous too. Oh? Uh, I mean, I'm supposed to be paired up with you today, not him. He has no business trying to, to take you from me. Not like he could, anyway. He's so hot. I'm so excited to see Ren dacted. His words remind me of the day at the pier, when that pushy cashier kept trying to flirt with Ren. I won't lie and say I hadn't been affected by it. It's hard not to be when being with Ren had been one of the most exciting things as of late, but I still had so many things I needed to discuss with him. What better place to start than here? About that, remember our time by the boardwalk the other day? Uh, oh, date by the pier. Yeah, and how that cashier tried to... Well, I'm not really sure what she was trying, but she seemed real cozy with you. Cozy? Did it come across that way? I thought I made my intentions with her clear. <laughs> Birds. The confusion must have been written all over my face as Ren takes it upon himself to elaborate further. I, um, may have threatened to push her down the staircase. I, I wouldn't really do it though. Yes, you would. What? You really tried to threaten her? Y yes, but only because she tried to take me away from you. I never want to make you upset or leave your side for that matter. We were having fun together. She had to come along and ruin it. Besides, whatever she had to show me downstairs probably wouldn't have been that interesting anyway. I let out a deep sigh and weigh Ren's words. Was he really telling me the truth? I swear, I'm not interested in her, Angel. In fact, I'm not really interested in anyone who isn't you. Hehe. <laughs> I guess I haven't really been forward enough with you, huh? In that case, I watch Ren take a tentative step towards me and reaches an arm out. But before I can feel the cool touch of his hand on my cheek, he seems to hesitate. But when I take my own step closer and lean my head into his hand, Ren's demeanor seems to melt instantly. He sends me a soft smile before fully committing to cupping my cheek. Believe me when I say, my only interest is you, Mini. No one could possibly sway me from you. I'm yours completely. All of me, and more. Aww, that's so cute. Ren's gaze is almost intense as he peers down at me. Sincerity manifests on his face and in his words and I find myself slowly believing it. You don't need to feel the same way right now, but so long as you believe me, that's all I ask and... His gaze drops to his feet, and the hand that was once caressing my face now moves to cover his mouth instead. Perhaps it was a trick of the eye, but I could have sworn I saw Ren gently inhale. Maybe don't look at anyone else who isn't me, too. What was that? Nothing. Just wondering if Mr. Wasabi Hair is still outside the store. <laughs> Wasabi Hair? Wasabi Hair? Why don't you go outside and check then, Buttercup? I'll wait here. No, I like being here with you instead. Ren takes yet another step closer. We're practically chest to chest at this point, until I could feel the warmth radiate from his body and bring me comfort. No one, compares to you, could bask in your company for as long as you'd let me, I'd never tire of you. Oh, was that too much? I figure I'd be more honest and open with you to avoid any more misunderstandings, but I can dial it back, or not do it at all, if you prefer. I don't mind it. Ren, I just, I wasn't expecting it, I guess. Normally you're more reserved, almost like her, like Haruka, right? What a coincidence, huh? Oh yeah, what a coincidence, huh? I suppose. 
He is my favorite character for a reason, you know? And is it winning me any points? We'll see. I can feel Ren's breath ghost against the shell of my ear as he lets out a puff of laughter. I can't believe I'm getting jealous over an anime character. Hey now, unlike Haruka, you're real. I can touch you. Ren's face seems to immediately flush at that. Besides, imagine how Tio must be feeling right now. We've been in here for how long? Y you know, I didn't think you'd be on board with making him jealous. Really? Yeah, but if you're still up to it. There's a mischievous glint in Ren's eyes, making him look younger and more youthful than he normally appears. What harm could the little prank do? I did want to get back at Tio for making me go through with this in the first place. And admittedly, I was enjoying my time with Ren in the closet. I wouldn't have had this much needed conversation otherwise, nor would I have gotten any clarity if I kept pondering over it endlessly. With a lopsided smile of my own, I came to a decision. How you respond? Try and make Tia jealous, yeah let's do it. Actually, I think I have something different in mind. Uh, oh. With a sudden surge of confidence, I take a step closer to Ren and reach for his waist. He peers down at me with wide, curious eyes and even goes as far as letting me guide him into a corner before closing the distance once more. But soon enough, his hands reach out for me to draw me closer to his warmth, and while it was hard to see in this room, it was easy to make out the feather-like touch of Ren's fingers as they glide across my skin. He cups my face with such love and tenderness that it almost makes me believe I gave him the wrong idea about staying in this closet. That is, until he brings me closer to his own in order to kiss me. Far too swept up in the moment. I barely notice Ren's hands until I feel a slight press of his fingers against my sides as he brings me closer to him. Angel? Ren's voice seems to have lost its usual soft and timid demeanor, instead being replaced with something coarse and baritone, as he looks down at me with half-lidded eyes. The smile I give him in return is anything but innocent as I fall to my knees. At that, Ren seems to get the hint almost immediately. If the noise he lets out is any indication, as his hands scramble to seek purchase on the shelf behind him, looks down at me with wide eyes. Angel, you, you don't, you don't have to. I'm cashing in that favor now. Ren's voice echoes inside the cramped space, and I can feel his body tense underneath me. Reaching down, I carefully relieve him and free him of his confines. Uh, oh, I can't help but let out a surprise sound the moment it springs free. Clearly not prepared to be met with something so... big? Whoa! <laughs> Even from down here, I can hear the back of his head thump against one of the shelves as he revels in all the attention. And as if to show his gratitude, Ren gently cards his hands through my long hair. His touch is soft and gentle, seemingly a sharp contrast to what is in front of me right now. I'm so used to seeing Ren act all shy and bashful around me, so this was honestly a nice and welcome change of pace. Oh no, here we go. <laughs> Keep going. Just like that. Please. His voice comes out hoarse. And had I been paying more attention, I would have said it sounded like a whimper. Oh, so he does whimper. I'd stay like this forever. Jeez, whoa. <laughs> I'm kind of blushing here having to say stuff like that. I hardly ever see the side of Ren, and now that he's given me a taste, I only want more. Admittedly, I was having way too much fun teasing Ren in order to see all his different sounds and reactions, but I figured it was about time to play nice with him. Though he must have been getting close to being ready since he was slowly starting to topple over and his words were beginning to slur. Without any further warning, Ren doubles over as he rises. So, how was it? You must seriously be an angel. So you just took me to heaven. So cute! Glancing up, I notice how he still seems dazed and boneless against the shelf. Holding back my laughter, I begin to tidy up my appearance and help Ren his as well. Tio is going to be so jealous. As soon as I exit the storeroom, the first thing we notice is that Tio no, and our food were nowhere in sight. Well, I guess the resident arsonist really got what he wanted after all, and for some reason, Ren seems just as bummed about the situation too. They really just left. I guess so, which kind of sucks because Tia was my ride home. Oh, I can drop you off if you want, or you could go to my place. It's not far and we still have some time to kill. All of a sudden, the chilling thought of a potential stalker lurking about returns and I will the unsettling feeling in my stomach to calm down. Perhaps going home wouldn't be the best idea right now, especially if someone might still be there waiting for me. Ren's innocent offer lingers in my mind and I find myself feeling more and more inclined to take him up on it as the seconds pass. I mean, I definitely would feel much better if I had someone else around in the off chance that something were to happen. Plus, Ren did offer to let me stay at his place if something ever went wrong, and some part of me almost felt safe in his presence. Still, 
I didn't want to concern him with my troubles, let alone potentially put his well-being at risk. I also didn't want anything to happen to Kiara by revealing too much to Ren. So maybe it would be best if I kept quiet about my problems and accept his offer. And if I change my mind, I'm sure Ren will be kind enough to bring me home. So with a forced smile, I peer up at Ren with a determined look and give him my answer. S sounds good to me. The walk to the parking lot was slow and uneventful, but I didn't seem to mind. I was having fun with Ren as we playfully nudged each other along the sidewalk, and the banter we shared helped brighten my mood. Eventually though, things started to wind down and I found myself trying to kill the silence. So, Tio and Eleanor, huh? Somehow, the conversation keeps falling back to the pair and I just couldn't understand why. It wasn't like I was actively trying to think about them. But maybe I just need to rack my brain around for the thought to leave my mind. A sideward glance in Ren's direction shows that he genuinely was considering my question. But the purse lip and head tilt were anything to go by and I couldn't help but chuckle. It, it sure is a weird combo now that I think about it, but well if it works. That's true, I suppose. It's just hard to imagine Nori with someone like Tio. Yeah. Do you think it's impossible, being with someone who's not your type? I guess it depends on the person. I mean, Nori's so nice and lovely and Tio is like... Stepped on gum on the sidewalk. I see. What about you, Ren? Thinking you could be with someone who might not be your type? No, absolutely not. His response is immediate. And it has me turning my head in my pink-haired companion's direction. I mean, you're my type. Why would I want to be with someone who isn't you? Oh, but this isn't about me, right? You asked about Eleanor and Tio. Yeah, well, do you think they should be a couple? I choose to ignore the way Ren evades my initial question. But I won't lie. His own musings does leave me pondering. Did I think my friend and co-worker would be a good couple? Hypothetically, of course. I was well aware of the fact that B, Teodore Alvarado, would never settle down with anyone. But still, if anyone would be able to get Tia to change his ways, I'm sure Eleanor could do it. She just has a certain charm about her that makes everyone want to be a better person. I had no doubt that even people like Tia wouldn't be immune to it. I'm not really sure, to be honest. Yeah, it's hard to tell with those two, isn't it? Maybe it's best if we leave it up to destiny. You know, you sound an awful lot like Leon. Soon enough, our conversation comes to a halt when a sleek black sports bike comes into view. So Ren bought his bike again, huh? Anami still expected someone like him to just walk everywhere if I was being honest. If I had known I'd be bringing you home, I would have brought my car instead. But I, um, recently loaned it to a friend, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, he's out of town, though. I doubt I'll be getting it back anytime soon. But anyway, Ren retrieves a spare helmet from the side of his motorbike and turns to me once more. All too familiar with this routine, I let him slip the helmet on and secure it tightly. I still wasn't used to riding his bike, but I put the fear aside for the prospect of more free food and a warm home. Somehow, we managed to make it to Ren's apartment complex in record time. I guess he really wasn't lying when he said it wasn't that far. Unlike Tio, Ren lawfully parks his bike in the designated area before guiding me towards the elevator with a spring in his step. Tacky music plays as we slowly ascend to the upper levels, although Ren only makes it even more awkward by staring at the back of my head the entire time. I can practically feel his eyes on me, even as I try to ignore them, so I offer him a forced grin while we both wait for the elevator doors to open. Once they do, I let out a sigh of relief. The same gaudy interior greets us and I still find myself trying to process how Ren could afford such a lavish place. Too lost in thought, I aimlessly follow behind my pink-haired companion as he leads me towards his door, before bumping into his backside when he abruptly stops in his tracks. Concerned at his odd and sudden reaction, I glance up only to find him staring intently at the floor. Following Ren's gaze, I notice the lights coming from beneath the cracks of one of the doors, and weirdly enough, the faintest hint of black smoke seems to be emerging from there as well. Smoke? Did they burn their food or something? Confused, I look to Ren to see if he has any better ideas. Is there something wrong? Hmm? Oh, no. I just didn't realize someone had moved in. I thought I was the only one who lived on this floor. I'm not a fan of sharing, are we? Not particularly. Still, I guess everything should be fine as long as I don't. Never mind. Oh, yeah. Because I remember, like, reading through the 14 Days with You Tumblr and Ren has, like, powers? But they haven't been revealed yet. I wonder what he's actually done to get this place. Before I can question it, Ren continues walking until we arrive at our destination. Watching him dig through his pockets for his keycard only reminds me to check my phone. But when I reach for it, I notice that my own pockets are empty. A wave of realization hits me as the panic slowly starts to creep in. Oh, shoot! Hmm? In my flustered state, I barely notice Ren turning to me with a curious look on his face. Oh, I think I left my phone back at the aquarium. Are you sure? Yeah, 
I'm pretty sure I placed it on the shelf will be, you know, Ren seems to blush at that. Hey, don't worry, I'll go back and get it. The aquarium should still be open anyway. I'm so sorry about this. Ren unlocks the door and gestures for me to go inside. Don't worry about it, Yiddy. Yeah, make yourself at home. I'll be back before you know it. Ren doesn't give me a chance to say goodbye before he's speeding off towards the direction of the elevator, leaving me to my own devices. I awkwardly step inside his apartment and take everything in. Everything looks the same as last time I was here, down to the cold marble flooring and gaudy furniture scattered about the place. Then although I didn't notice it last time, the mirror in his entryway looked very similar to mine. The only difference was that his was hung up correctly. He, well, at least now I know what mine will look like once I put in the effort to fix it. But until then, it's going to stay crookedly placed on my wall and forever taught me. Saving that mental note for later, I recall my steps towards Ren's spacious lounge and take everything in. Yep, still the same grandiose furniture, sterile smell and... Wait a second. Oh, looking closer. It's then when I notice a large desk pressed against one of the corners in the room, tucked and hidden away from view. It didn't look brand new though. Though I don't recall looking in that spot the last time I was here either. The desk could have been there since the beginning for all I know. I can't help the twang of curiosity that hits me as I draw closer towards it. And with the desk now close enough to see, I can easily make out the shape of some kind of art station, as well as Ren's laptop still open to the side. The papers were scattered all over the rest of the table, and another tentative step closer brings its content into view. Were they rough drafts for a webcomic. I had an inkling Red would be into them given his interest in AOG, but I had no idea he created a few of his own. One book in particular, however, piques my interest with his unique cover, but it might have just been the book lover in me. It was thick and worn out. Haha, <laughs> just, just like Ren's thing after today, hehe. <laughs> and yet it looked like it was well taken care of. I noticed some kind of smudge marks, possibly red paint stained in the front of the cover, as well as some sort of circular, indented notch right in the center. Is this a demonic term? Does something go inside here? The contraption is foreign to me, but whatever fit inside must have been how you unlock it. As I turn the book in my hand, I notice the latch was already detached and a few loose pages spill out onto the desk. Oh! From the panic cry, I quickly scoop the papers back up and open the book to stuff them back inside. But as I do, something else catches my eye. One of these sketches from Always With You. I could easily make out the male lead's hairstyle anywhere. After all, it was similar to Ren's or rather Haruko's, yet this one had a contrasting shade of black instead of pink. Maybe another character then? Strange. I don't remember seeing any similar blackhead characters in the webcomic. Still, the likeness of the art style was insane, and Always With You was the only webcomic published by the anonymous author. Their debut into the online industry was a huge success because of it. Is Ren the author? So... Anna? It was only cute to think that Ren might have made his own self-insert character. Although if I were any better at art, I probably would have done the same. Curiosity gets the better of me. Or was it my hyperfixation? And I was half tempted to peek through the rest of the book to learn more. Should I? Yeah, let's investigate the drawing. I can't resist the urge to flip through the pages and when I do, my suspicions are confirmed. There, right in front of my eyes were the all too familiar characters from Always With You. Yet something about them felt almost uncanny. They didn't look exactly like the characters from the webcomic though I could sense a certain familiarity from them. And upon closer inspection, most of the drawings were of the main character and their love interest doing various lovey-dovey things, but other drawings were depicted as rather ominous and gloomy. Which was ironic, considering that the male lead was usually referred to as gloomy by the narrator. He was often withdrawn and greatly preferred to lurk in the shadows instead of interacting with others so the name really fit. But still, seeing my beloved gloomy in some of these drawings, surrounded by hundreds of creepy eyes, harsh scribbles and some of that deep red ink, it honestly made me feel bad for him. Why was he often being drawn in a dark room with nothing in it? And why did it look so familiar? Figuring I'd seen enough. Or perhaps I just didn't want to see one of my comfort characters so alone. I tear my eyes away from the pages and close the book. When I do, I make sure to shut the latch properly and place it back inside the table. But when I do so, I accidentally knock over one of the ink bottles which stains the desk a deep shade of black. Oh shit! I frantically skitter about to look for some paper towels and eventually settle on some toilet paper from Ren's bathroom. By some miracle, it easily lifts the mark from the desk, though it only seems to transfer onto my skin instead. No, oh, great. Just when I thought it couldn't get any worse. It takes a solo minute or two of scrubbing until I'm satisfied, and once I'm sure no stains are left on the table, I haphazardly throw the toilet paper into the trash can and wash my hands in this kitchen sink. It alone takes me another 5 minutes of scrubbing and rinsing, but I somehow manage to lift all the ink from my skin and wash it down the drain. After all this, I definitely learned my lesson not to snoop ever again. With an embarrassed sigh, I plop myself on the couch and let out a groan. A small part of me knew that Ren wouldn't get upset over something so small, but still. I didn't want him to know that I was snooping through his things, much less trying to learn more about his personal hobbies and interests. The queasy feeling in the pit of my stomach only seemed to 
from work snapped that, and I contemplate running away from such a confronting scene and locking myself at home for the rest of my life. Yep, dramatic, sounds like me. To get my phone, I could always buy a new one. I'm sure I still had my spare one still lying around in the box collecting dust somewhere. I'm sure the screen was cracked but it'd still get the job done. Still, I couldn't help but feel like I was making a mountain out of a molehill, and there was still the looming threat of a potential stalker waiting for me to come home. Maybe it's best if I stayed here after all. And with that thought in mind, I settle further into Ren's plush couch and anxiously await his return. I can hear the faint ticking of a clock from somewhere in the endless maze of an apartment, alongside the occasional humming of the central heater he turned on before he left. So he finally figured out how it worked. Aside from that, hell vision, the tell of the silence, is almost deafening. I have half a mind to reach for the remote and turn on the television. Surely it wouldn't hurt. I mean, Ren did say I could make myself at home, you know, potential snooping aside. <laughs> Perhaps it was to get rid of the guilty feeling forming in my stomach, but I quickly find myself shaking my head to dismiss those thoughts and reaching for the remote on the table. Looking through the channels, I land on one in particular. Although the signal was weak, I could discern the picture of some news porter in a blazer that looked far too flimsy to keep her warm. Just droning on about the local happenings in Colin Bay before a familiar backdrop comes on screen and captures my attention. Oh, the entrance to the aquarium appears on the television as ambulance lights flash and sirens go off in the background. There's a somber expression on the reporter's face as she communicates with her counterpart who's currently at the location. Victim's body has just been found, mauled and ripped apart in one of the shark tanks. Is it Tio? Authorities have confirmed that it is the body of Christian. Um, I think, I think Tio's dead. I, I think Tio's actually dead. Oh my, oh my god. No, because Tio's last name ends with D.O. as well because it's Alvarado, isn't it? And he's also an heir to a tech marketing thing. Also believe that this was a self-inflicted accident. You're on the scene with us. We have the mayor's chairman and mother to the victim, Katari Alvar- To talk about Tears actually dead. Is this because I said I wouldn't mind if he died? Oh no. Oh my god. I feel kind of bad. I didn't expect him to kill him like in this like right now. The TV turns a static and I quickly reach for the remote to find another channel. Another news show pops up, this time showing a grainy black and white recording of CCTV taken from the aquarium. Although, it's hard to make out, the footage depicts a person pacing around on the wooden decks until the upper half of their body is just out of frame. Do you think Ren got my phone and used it to call Tio to come back to the aquarium? And the rest of their body was still in view, though being illuminated by their phone screen as they fiddled with it, then all of a sudden, the person immediately drops it almost as if it was too hot to touch and takes a step back. They must have lost their footing or something, as they end up tumbling into the tank and submerging themselves underwater. The footage cuts out shortly after, seemingly too inappropriate, to air on live TV as noted by the reporter. I let out a breath I hadn't known I'd been holding and let reality sink in. I was just at that aquarium. I looked at those sharks with everyone just hours prior. Everything felt too surreal in this moment, and I suddenly wish I had my phone to text Eleanor and Tio to see if they saw the news. With my heartbeat still hammering loudly in my chest, I ended up un unconsciously turning the TV off to avoid hearing more about heavy topics. Seeing all of this recent talk of gore and murder on TV, it makes me feel... I feel sick just hearing about it. How all this gory violence and death makes me feel uneasy. In fact, it was one of the reasons why I left the city in the first place. Prior to moving to Colum Bay, I'd always been surrounded by petty crimes and selfish assholes who called themselves my friends, and even the stench of death. Moving here had been a good decision at the start, but now I'm not so sure. Everyone would always say that nothing bad ever happens in the Bay, but after recent events, it's slowly becoming untrue. <sighs> I suppose it wasn't all bad. I have supportive friends now, and an amazing boss and co-worker and a timid library patron who goes to great lengths to keep me safe. Yeah, including, um, killing your ex-boyfriend. Man, I never truly appreciated Ren's thoughtfulness until this moment. He's done so much for me in the past few days, and not once has he asked for anything in return. As if manifesting him with my thoughts, I hear the telltale sounds of the front door unlocking before Ren shuffles inside and flicks on all the lights. In one of his hands is my beloved phone, along with a bag of delicious smelling takeout and an angelfish plushie peeking out from the other. Almost like a puppy, Ren immediately makes his way over to me, still perched on the couch before depositing the toy in my hands. Yay, were you sitting in here without any lights? Sorry, I should have turned them on before I left, but um... I bought some food with me. I figured you might be hungry. I don't really have much food in the pantry right now. So, how was your murder spree? 
Also, well, Ren looks as if he has something deeply serious he wants to say, and I had some kind of inclination as to what it might be. If something happened at the aquarium, Uni. You might want to- Actually, maybe we should move this conversation to the kitchen. I already know, Ren. You do? About- I saw it on the news. So it's true then, someone really did die? But I didn't stick around to find out once the first cop car pulled up, but I don't know, something doesn't add up. What do you mean? Ren looks conflicted with what he has to say. I passed by that shark tank when I went to retrieve your phone and I- Well, I didn't exactly stop to look, but I didn't see any dead bodies in there. Look, I know we said some incriminating things today, but I swear. It wasn't serious and I- Angel, I would never- I, I could tell Ren was taking this hard with how he couldn't meet my gaze and his shoulders seemed to shake. I wasn't the one who killed them. It's okay. I believe you. You do. It was like a weight was taken off his shoulders, and without thinking I find myself stepping closer to bring Ren into a comforting hug. I know you, Ren. You've never heard a fly. When I saw what happened on TV, they fell into that tank. The reporters say it was a self-inflicted accident. Ren, you really are an angel. I can feel his hands clench around the back of my shirt before he pulls away with a forlorn expression. He attempts to put a smile on for my sake, though I could see right through it. Yeah, why don't we eat something to get our minds off this? Are you feeling up to it? I know this might be a lot for you to stomach right now. Yeah, some food might be nice. Great, let me get some plates so we can eat them. Ren lifts himself on the back of the sofa. He makes sure to hand my cell phone back to me as well before heading off towards the kitchen. Now reunited with my beloved phone once more, I unlock it and check for any notifications. One update in particular lets me know that the security camera I ordered had been successfully delivered, and that alone makes me feel safe enough to return to my apartment should I change my mind about staying here. On a satisfied hum, I quickly pocket my phone lest I lose it again and follow Ren into the kitchen. I watch as he turns on all the lights in there before he places the takeout on the countertop and stops to sniff the air. Uh oh. What's that smell? Oh shit, I almost forgot about the ink I hastily threw away in the trash. In retrospect, I probably should have flushed it down the toilet or something. Oh, about that, I... Be honest. I figured it'd be best if I simply came clean. After all, Ren didn't deserve to be lied to, much less have a guess he trusted snoop through his belongings while he was away. Man, if only I could say the same thing about my stalker. Before I can dwell on it any further, Ren's worried look pulls me from my thoughts and back to the present. Well, he goes nothing. I accidentally spilled some of your ink earlier. You what? Food now long forgotten, Ren rounds the corner with seconds and peers down at me with soft eyes. Are you okay? It didn't stain you, did it? Let me see. He was still concerned about me. I watch as Ren reveals more of his hands from within the sleeves of his cardigans to hold and inspect my own. His blue eyes are full of concern as I feel the rough pads of his thumbs caress my skin. Once again, I'm reminded of the ring on his finger and I can't help but ask. That ring, it must be special to you, huh? M my ring. Ren follows my gaze to his hand before awkwardly pulling away and scratching at his jaw. Yes, it's a ring I made when I was younger. I'm surprised you noticed it. The ring, it means a lot to me. I didn't know what I'd do if I lost it. It's very pretty. What about the one around your neck? That's... Ren climbs up the moment I meekly reach out to touch it. He stares at me with wide, cautious eyes. His own fingers wrap around my wrist. Though he makes no effort to remove my hand from his necklace. In fact, he only seems to hold them in place as he peers at me. Feigning confidence, I run my fingers across the cold metal of his ring and take in all the small details. Much like the ring on Ren's finger, the one around his neck also had a handmade feel to it. If the faint scratches and chips were anything to go by, though the craftsmanship was no less impressive. There also seems to be some kind of inscription inside the ring. It was difficult for me to read due to the glare coming from the kitchen light. Nanami wants to pull it closer to get a better view, though I doubt it'd be a good idea to yank Ren down by his necklace, especially considering how he was already hunching over enough as it is. Still, I couldn't stop my budding curiosity from putting one of my fingers inside the ring to see if it'd fit, and almost immediately Ren stumbles forward as his fingers gently squeeze my wrist. Do you wanna... do you wanna try it on? Before Ren can speak, a loud booming noise erupts from outside the apartment and startles the both of us. Man! Was it seriously about to start raining again? You're joking. With a sigh, I abruptly pull away and glance out one of the large ceiling to floor windows. Dark clouds were rolling in from the distance, though there weren't any telltale signs of rain yet. Though the ominous black smoke was new, I didn't know the condensation got this bad. We weren't even up that high for the fog to appear. Hmm. With a dark, with a sigh, I abruptly pull away and glance out on one of the large ceiling to floor windows. Dark clouds were rolling in from the distance, though there weren't any telltale signs of rain. Yet. Though the ominous black smoke was new. I didn't know the condensation got this bad. We weren't even that high up for the fog to appear. Was this some kind of sign? Still, it wouldn't do to be stuck waiting out yet another storm again. So I glance in Ren's direction and offer a sympathetic smile. M maybe I should head home before it starts raining? How you respond? Alright. 
Let's stay the night this time, and then we'll go home the next time. It's probably best for me to just wait out the storm somewhere safe. If Ren was willing, I wouldn't mind spending the night here. Actually, would it be okay if I crashed at your place tonight? His gaze was still on the black smoke outside the window. It took a gentle nudge and the mention of his name to get Ren's attention once more. Why is it? I haven't done any- Wait, does the smoke have something to do with Ren? Oh, um, I mean yes, of course, it's no problem. I'll, uh, I'll go get your stuff set up right now. Yeah, go ahead and start eating while I go prepare your room. Thanks, Ren. It's great that I can rely on you for anything. Uh, <laughs> why does he look so turned on? I mean, yeah, of course. You can rely on me to keep you safe. His cheeks immediately flush at my words, but I could tell that something was still troubling him. Though before I get the chance to ask, he's already leaving the kitchen and meandering down the hallway. But just as Ren passes by the couch, I notice how his gaze shifts to his little art station hidden in the corner of the lounge room. He casts a curious glance in my direction before taking a step towards it. Did you... was that where you spilled the ink? Sorry, but I didn't mean to. And it wasn't like I was going through your stuff, I only looked at the table, I promise. I see. So that explains why it's... With an unreadable expression, Ren switches from looking impassive to determined in a matter of seconds. He reaches for something on the table, but it was hard to see what it was from where I was sitting in the kitchen. You keep on eating, I'll join you shortly. And with that, he disappears into the darkness of his apartment. Deciding there's no use in overthinking his eccentric reactions, or dwelling over the fact that I got caught red-handed for being nosy, I pick up a fork and begin to dig into my food. The taste of something both sweet and savoury floods my taste buds, and I learn how to please Tom. Man, was takeout always as good? It only takes three more modest bites before I practically scarf down my meal. The flavour was immaculate, and I made a mental note to ask Ren what exactly he ordered the moment he returns. And now that I think about it, it had been a while since he left, and Ren still hasn't come back yet. It should have been more than 20 minutes by now, and his food was starting to get cold. Was he really mad after all? Maybe he needed help. Whether or not it was the guilt still ebbing and flowing inside of me, I put my food aside and tried to locate the eccentric guy in his stupidly large apartment. Ren? Are you there? I bet no catchy joke in it. Ren? Anyways, but as I tiptoe down the hallway, the very same black smoke from earlier rolls out from underneath one of the doors, making my mind grow fuzzy and my legs feel like jelly. What the? Confused and slightly dazed, I lean against the wall for support and weakly call out Ren's name. What was happening to me? A lurching feeling settles within the pit of my stomach, and just before I topple over, strong scarred arms reach out and catch me. Wait, why is Ren's shirt off? We joking it! Are you alright? Don't overwork yourself, Edie. I should apologize. I didn't mean for this to happen. I should have helped you out more. The choices you're making and the path you're going down, it's not what I- No, never mind. Look, you have to know. I can't keep doing this for you, Edie. Doing what? What happened? What did I do? I can't keep preventing you from getting my bad end. You won't like what happens. You won't like it. It's not as kind as me. Not as soft or lenient. It'll sense your fear and feed off of it. Are we talking about Rendacted? Even if you give it just a small dose, it won't. It won't. It won't. I'm scared. Oh god. See? It's scary. And it won't hold back. It deserves to rot in here with me. It deserves to die. It deserves to drown in its own filth and carnage, choke on its regrets until it's nothing left but its husk. That disgusting abhorrence deserves to wither in the darkness void of any light or happiness. It doesn't deserve to be in the light, it doesn't deserve to bask in your radiance. To see how much you light up with a smile, it doesn't deserve to feel your warmth. It should live an eternity in damnation and solitude. Jesus. For making me feel these decrepit emotions, or making me think these thoughts and act this way. I scared you because of it. I should kill it. I want to kill it. What the hell? I'm sorry. Did I scare you again? I can't help it. Being here for so long, everything takes a toll on you. It makes me feel this way. Who is it? Forces me to. I won't hurt you. Don't worry. I'll protect you from it. It doesn't deserve you. But I do. I'm, I'm worried. Oh dear. The do I in the middle is kind of just hurts my feelings a little bit. I love you, Yini. I love you. More than it ever could. More than anyone ever can. Is this Ren talking or is this it? They wouldn't do this for you. No one would. Only me. Your light. 
The light doesn't deserve to be tarnished by what happens in here. Sorry. Look, all I want is for you to stop trying to go down this path. If you really want to see me, you don't need to keep making the wrong choices. I'll always be watching you. I'll always be with you. And I'll always protect you. From the people who try to take you away from me. From my bad ends. From it. There's nothing that will keep me from you. But if you really want to continue meeting me here like this, I won't stop you. I'll hold back the inevitable. But just know, there will come a time I won't be able to bring you back to this place again. There's a limit on how often I can... No, never mind. I don't want to worry you. Alright? I'm going to send you back again, okay? So promise me. Promise me this time. You'll listen to my warnings. I'll help you as much as I can next time. So don't concern yourself with meeting me here anymore. This is kind of sad. I'll find a way to meet you instead. I already can. Anyway, have you figured it out yet? Promise me. Promise me we won't meet here anymore. Please don't jump scare me. I am a chicken. What the hell happened? What the hell was that? Oh god. Huh? Man. I, I, oh my god. That ending was so, so good though. I like how there's like little sprinkles of supernatural. All right. We are going to try and get one of the other better endings now. All right. We're back here. So instead of going in the storeroom this time, we are going to wait for Ren to notice us. The moment Ren notices my alarmed expression, he immediately starts to make a beeline towards Tio and I. But just as he gets cut off by a large family passing by, Tio's body covers him from my view. Looks like we gotta hurry this up. Without warning, Tio gently tugs me along by the sleeve of my jacket and shuts the door behind us with an audible click. Wow, so I didn't even get a choice? You're hot, but that doesn't mean you can throw me around. I mean, maybe. Darkness envelops the both of us as I strain to make out the sound of Tio shuffling in order to pinpoint where he is. I seriously can't believe he wrote me into doing this. This is my side. Don't cross that line. What line? Line I just drew with my fingers. Tia, I can barely see anything in here. Well, almost. Even in the corner of the room, I can still make out the faint shape of boxes on the shelves. Alongside a dirty mop and cleaning supplies that Tia made sure to put me near. Alright, I'm gonna skip forward a little bit. There we go. And then, this time we're gonna tell Ren that we like him the most. And when we get to this choice, we dissuade his dark behavior. Ren, that was really messed up. You shouldn't joke around like that, especially when it involves my friends. I was only kidding, Angel. Really, I wouldn't actually do something like that. His blue eyes widen, and I can tell from his expression that Ren was being sincere in this moment. Sorry, it was a stupid thing to say. I won't ever do it again, I promise. Cross your heart? And hope to die- uh, No, I mean, wait. I really need to start thinking before I speak. I was partially to blame for setting Ren up like that. So I let him know by rolling my eyes and sending him a reassuring smile. Well, now that that's sorted, I think we should leave this dingy storage closet by now as well, don't you? I mean, we've been in here for a while, and Nori has our food. Alright, skip forward a bit. We are now back at Ren's apartment. So instead of investigating the drawings, I might check out the desk, holding the book to my chest for now. I still glance at the desk once more. The papers were still there alongside Ren's laptop that was still surprisingly on despite not being plugged into a power socket. Wait, what? Admittedly, it did pique my interest. Why would Ren leave his laptop unattended? As if getting a response, a message pops up on the screen and startles me. You sure that it was O? What was she doing there? Didn't we... you know... Wait, what? O? O wasn't who? Olivia? Wait, what? Wait, Olivia! That was the... That was the girl at the store that Ren threatened to push down the stairs. And don't tell me you're still keeping contact with that thing. What thing? You know what's gonna happen if you do. Don't make it mad, Ren. What thing? The thing? The thing from the bad ending? Look, I'll see if I can visit and help you out as well. Need to return your boring piece of junk anyway. Era didn't like it. What? Well, whatever. Don't do anything stupid in the meantime. Redacted? What the heck? I think this is in reference to another game. Because I, when I was in the Discord, they were talking about another game. Because I, I think it was called like Unsent Memories. Yeah, it was called Unsent Memory, which is another Yandere game that is being worked on in the background as well. Uh, which takes place a year before 14 Days With You. All of a sudden, the app closes itself and shows me Ren's cluttered desktop. And now the corner of my eye, I swear I see the red light of his webcam turn on for a split second. I shouldn't have been looking through Ren's personal messages without his permission. What kind of creep does that anyway? Almost ashamed. I step away from the laptop, but not before realizing the item still grasped in my hands. Oh, 
Closing the book, I make sure to shut the latch properly and place it back on the table. But as I do, I accidentally knock over one of the ink bottles. Alright, so we knock over the ink. Alright, so now, after we spilled the ink and washed it away, we are going to go check out the TV. I think this time, Tio isn't dead. Looking through the channels, I land on one in particular. Although the signal was weak, I could discern the picture of some news reporter in a blazer that looked far too flimsy to keep her warm. She's droning on about the local happenings in Colin Bay before a familiar backdrop comes on screen and captures my full attention. Oh? It looked like the upscale restaurant where Conan and my other co-workers held my welcoming party. Everything still looks the same, except the main thing that holds my interest are the two people sitting in a quiet corner of the room. No way! I could easily make out the blonde patch of Eleanor's head. But what surprised me was the fact that Tyr was there as well. In fact, he seemed all too happy to be in Eleanor's company, given how he was casually leaning into his chair with a lazy smirk on his face. Was he enjoying himself? But more importantly, were they still on a date? Well, it's good that he's not dead. I mean, like, the dude's an ass, but I didn't, I didn't want him to die. That's not possible. Tyr and Eleanor? Tyr, Mr. Non-Committal himself. I was certain today's outing had only been for his enjoyment, yet why didn't he look genuinely happy to be on a date with Eleanor? Slapping my hands against my cheeks, I bring myself to my senses. I was so caught up on Tyr that I almost forgot another major factor. Eleanor. She's the most sweetest, caring person I know, and she could make just about anyone soften up to her. I wouldn't put it past Tyr to realize that and possibly open up as well, but still, it certainly wasn't what I was expecting and so soon too. The news reporter returns and continues on about some pre-planned renovations happening at the restaurant, right before it switches to a pre-recorded broadcast about a recent murder in the city. The mere mention of New Salvus had me curling in with disgust. I had half a mind to change the channel, turn the TV off altogether. Seeing all this recent talk of gore and murder on TV makes me feel... I feel sick just hearing about it. It makes me feel uneasy. Right, I'm gonna move forward. Um, we're gonna be honest and tell him. Tell him about the ink. And then, yeah, this is where we talk about the ring and stuff. But this time, instead of staying the night, which gets you the bad ending, we are going to go home. Yeah, it's probably best for me to go home before that storm gets any worse. I still have to go back to work tomorrow anyway. Thanks for today, but I should probably start heading back now. Uh, oh, it's really no problem. Yeah, why don't I put food in another bag and drop you off? Are you sure? I don't want to be a bother. You'd never be a bother to me. Tapping the table, Ren pushes himself up and sets off to find something to put my takeout in. What did I do to deserve someone as kind as Ren? With a smile on my own, I get up from the stool and slowly make my way towards the entrance once more, but not before throwing Ren one final compliment. It's great that I can rely on you for anything. <laughs> my god, look at his face. Look at it. He's so into you. Uh, I mean, of course. The ride back to my place was nothing short of ominous. The looming clouds on the horizon made the scenery seem dark and eerie, but thankfully Ren and his pastel-colored hair were there to brighten things up. He even offered to walk me to my door, and what greeted us both was a single package on top of my doormat. Panic flashes through me at the thought of it being another gift from my supposed stalker, but then I remember the purchase I made this morning and the notification I received on my phone. I got a notification on my phone? There's nothing on my phone! Ah, that must be my security camera. Deftly picking it up, I put it under my arm and I fish for my keys in one of my pockets. I can sense Ren's eyes on me, or rather, my package. But even as I glance in his direction, I can tell that he's trying to hold himself back from asking. Surely, there wouldn't be any harm in telling him. Oh, I, I bought a security system this morning, because of how shady this neighborhood is. I figured it'd be a good idea to be safer than sorry. That creep didn't come back, did they? Without thinking, I drop my keys and slap a hand over Ren's mouth while cautiously looking over my shoulder. <laughs> Why are you blushing? Are you into that? What was I doing? I was getting worked up and acting paranoid again. With an embarrassed look, I turn and apologize to Ren, only to find his cheeks a deep red and a hand wrapped around my wrist. When did he... Quickly withdrawing my hand, I squeak out an apology before picking up my keys and turning back to my door. I didn't want to get Ren involved with my problems, but I honestly didn't want to risk being alone tonight either. Too lost in my own world, I barely noticed Ren coming closer, nor his hand covering my keys to steady my fidgeting. Do you want some help? He must have seen the look of confusion on my face since he continues talking. That's setting up your camera, I mean. Self-taught programmer, remember? I'm sure I can figure it all out. Plus, it'd save you having to call someone over to install them. Wait, but if I give you, I, if I let you set up my cameras, you are gonna put something on it that lets you access the cameras. I mean, sure, I got nothing to hide from you anyway. He did have a point, and I'd honestly feel safer if I weren't alone tonight. 
Still, I've been spending so much time with Ren lately, I didn't want him to get fed up with me in my presence. Would it be a good idea? How will you respond? Alright, uh, I'm gonna let him stay the night this time. And next time we'll decline. Maybe it would be a good idea after all. Would you mind? I probably look pathetic without I barely make any eye contact. Instead, choosing to stare at my door rather than Ren. But he doesn't seem to mind. Or perhaps he simply chooses not to comment on it. I'd be happy to, Angel. With a smile, I open the door and let Ren inside. You know, I think we have the same mirror. Oh? Putting the small talk aside for a moment, I usher the pink-haired person into my living room and situate ourselves on the couch. Ren wastes no time in opening my package, placing all the bits and pieces on the table and setting off to work. Though every so often he'd sneak a peek in my direction whenever he thinks I'm not looking. That's so cute. Did he want something? Raising a brow, I send him a silent question. I don't mean to pry into your personal life, but you know you're always welcome to stay at my apartment. Ren, I've seen where you live. I doubt I could afford rent. You can stay for free. I don't mind at all. What? And just be like a stay-at-home wife? Uh, I'm more than capable of covering your cost. I'd make a really good roommate too. I always clean up after myself. I wouldn't mind doing the same for you as well. Only if you'd be fine with it though. Then I can cook as well. Laundry cleaning, repairing things around the house, so yard work, I could do it all for you, really. Ren, oh, you're so sweet. I can't take advantage of you like that. Wait, you have a yard? Man, they can really fit a lot into those upscale apartments, huh? Well, no, I don't. But I used to do the gardening and use the lawnmower a lot when I was younger. I'm sure I can figure it all out again. Not that I need to though, like you said. No yard. <laughs> No offense, Ren, but I can't imagine someone like you mowing grass. Isn't that a euphemism for, like, eating, you know? Was that your first job as a teen? Before that, actually. Oh, before that, you mean as a child? Maybe a bit younger? Younger? I mean, j just kidding. It, it was my first job as a teenager. Anyway, the point is, I'd be happy to let you stay at my place. Oh, well, I really appreciate the offer, Ren, but I gotta tough this one out on my own. Oh, if you say so. It goes quiet after that. Picking up the manual... Ren tries to busy himself with learning how to connect the camera to my Wi-Fi before tossing it aside and doing it his own way, deciding not to get in the way. I curl up on the couch with my food and simply observe him. I won't lie, watching Ren's hand deftly connect cables and unscrew plates was kind of attractive, but I wasn't about to say anything. I'll say something, your hands look great. Would you like to take your fingers and put them somewhere else? <laughs> and soon enough, the events of the evening slowly draw out as I start to feel the telltale signs of weariness take hold of me. I try my best to muffle my yawn before I glance up at the clock on my wall to read the time, just past midnight. Damn, I hadn't realized we'd been at this for so long. Tired? Ren's voice startles me and I glance back to see that he had already put down the cameras and was reclining in his seat to fully look at me. Kinda. It's been a long day. You can head off to bed if you want. I'll set all this up and lock up once I'm done. You're still gonna go home after this? You want me to stay? Did I? Strange. Perhaps it was because we've been spending so much time together, but it somehow grew fond of Ren's presence. It was comforting to have him near, though I wasn't about to tell that to him. So with an affirmative nod, I make the decision. Yeah, I do. Oh, Ren's grin practically reaches his ears as he laughs to himself. Okay, okay, sure. You're so cute. No problem. I can't help but playfully roll my eyes at his enthusiasm. Well then, why don't I get some pillows and blankets so we can camp out here for the night? <laughs> Just like a sleepover. Sure, his toothy grin reminds me of my childhood days, back when I'd beg all the adults to let some of my friends from school stay the night. With all of us wrapped up in patterned blankets, I'd cuddle up on the couch with everyone until we'd fell asleep. But it wasn't Leon who came to mind, it was someone else. Their face was blurry, but I could make out the tufts of black hair from within the blankets surrounding us, and the same toothy grin Ren was giving me. It's pretty obvious that we knew Ren as a child, because there was also the memory of him giving that ring to someone and... The person snubbed him and I'm pretty sure that was us. But when I focus my attention back on him, I notice the smile is gone. And he's instead looking at me with a confused look on his face. Ah, uh, I must have been spacing out again. Sorry, I'll um, I'll go get those pillows now. Let me know if you need any help. Ren's response gets drowned out as I flee into the hallway. It took a while, but Ren managed to set the cameras up and hook it all up to an app on my phone. All while I made myself comfortable on the couch. He explained how to use it, but if I were being honest, I started to nod off once he started geeking out about the different kinds of alarm buttons. Before I know, my head falls onto his shoulder with a soft thump, and I feel Ren's body shake as he lets out a faint laugh. Something moves from the chair next to him before a warm duvet is wrapped around my shoulders. I can feel Ren pull me to his side before we both fall backwards onto the couch. His chest softens the blow, and with one of his hands gently threading through my hair, I slowly start to drift off. That's cute. 
Nostalgia greets me once more, but before my consciousness fades away, I try to chase after the foggy memory that had been plaguing my brain as of late. Those three kids laughing and playing together near a lake. Who were they? And who was the one that stayed right by my side after everyone else went home? Uh, the one whose titties you're sleeping on right now? Almost desperately, I try to recall their face. Or any of their defining features. Really, at this point, i take anything. But it's all for naught when I feel Ren's lips fall to the crown of my head to place a chaste kiss. Sleep well, Yinny. With his comforting voice in my mind, I slowly start to slip away. Aww. Yay, we got the happy ending. Without anyone dying. Hurrah. Alright. Alright, I want to try something else. What happens when we tell Ren that we actually do like Tio. Actually, I do like Tio. I feel bad about this. Something akin to hatred flashes in Ren's eyes before he closes them and rests his forehead against my own. But the action was fast fleeting as his head eventually drops into the crook of my neck instead. His hands remain against the shelf behind me. I see. What does he have that I don't? Ren doesn't seem to respond. Instead, he simply stays rooted in place while his breath fans against my shoulder. I can almost hear the wooden shelf creak as his grip tightens, before he pulls back with a determined glint in his eyes. As long as Tio didn't do anything to you, then... And if he did, I'd kill him. Alright, so we're gonna dissuade his dark behavior. We're gonna leave the storage closet. And this time, let's look at the weird lock. Glancing at the book still in my hands, I check out the lock one more time. Yet no matter how many times I turn and angle the book differently, I still can't figure out how the mechanism works. It didn't look like a normal key would fit in, and I didn't see any space to insert one in the first place. All it had was a small indent in the center, and the room underneath to insert the latch. But upon further inspection, wouldn't the ring fit in there? Oh, the ring around his neck! It had just enough space for one, and it definitely fit the circular shape. But I don't think I'd ever heard of a lock that could be open with a ring. Maybe I should invest in one for my own apartment. Alright, and then we knock the ink over. What happens if we lie to him? Yeah, I noticed that smell too when I first came in. I'm not really sure what it was. Oh, maybe I left a window open. Or maybe it's the heating system. This is the first time I turned it on. Maybe there's something funky in one of the vents. He glances up at the ceiling as if to inspect it and I find myself following suit to make my fibs seem believable. Yeah, maybe. I feel bad for lying. But as Ren moves to throw away some discarded plastic left on the counter, his eyes catch sight of the inky paper sitting at the top of the rubbish. Shit. He still doesn't seem to react though. Before my guilty conscience can eat me alive, Ren's voice breaks the silence. Ah, I guess I forgot to take out the trash this morning. Sorry I had to put up with that strong smell. Oh no, he's like, he's actually really nice. I feel bad. What? He must have known. Surely he had every reason to call me out on my lie, yet he didn't. Instead, Ren t seems to take the blame with a carefree smile. No, oh, forget it. Maybe it was some form of righteousness, but I find myself confessing. I accidentally spilled some of your ink earlier. Alright, so he asked. Alright, this time let's go home. And this time we'll decline and say goodnight. Decline and say goodnight. No, I didn't want to risk it. I really appreciate the offer, Ren, but I gotta tough this one out on my own. Oh, if you say so. His concern for my well-being is evident. But I didn't want him to get involved. This was my problem, and I would handle it all on my own. Still, part of me knew I wouldn't hesitate to call him if something went wrong. After spending so much time with Ren, I grew to appreciate his company. Something about him felt so... comforting to me. A anyway, you should probably head home before the storm comes. Thanks for dropping me off. And for the food. I make sure to lift up the foot. I make sure to lift up the bag full of takeaway for him to see. Of course, thanks for um, paying for my ticket. You can thank Tio for that. <laughs> I think I'll pass. Ren's face playfully scrunches up at the main mention of Tio, and I find myself letting out a small chuckle before unlocking my front door and stepping into my apartment. Well, I should probably go set this camera up and head to bed. Stay safe when you drive back. You too. Oh, well, you're not driving anywhere, so dream safe. Uh, I mean, drive sleep. He's so cute. Stay well. Uh, I still can't get this right. <laughs> Good night, Ren. I send him off with a smile before closing the door. It takes me a while and countless online video tutorials, but I somehow managed to set up the security camera and connect them to the app on my phone without too much trouble. It would alert me of any unusual activity and movements while I'm not home, and I felt immediately safer because of it. Though I still had faith that my new lock hadn't been tampered with since I got it, considering how the letter had been shoved underneath the door rather than being placed on something as conspicuous as a table. If I had found it on my bedside table instead, I definitely would have felt true fear. It's getting worked up again. If I continue to think about this any more than I should, I swear I'd start to go crazy. 
Deciding that this was a problem for future me, I lock myself in my bedroom and hide within the safety of my duvet. A faint glow emits from my phone as I check to make sure I have all the angles in my apartment covered. Satisfied with my handiwork, I lay back on my bed and idly zoom in and out with one of the camera screens until I grow bored. I doubt I'd be able to fall asleep quickly, but it wouldn't hurt to try. Besides, I had to be up bright and early for work tomorrow. With that thought in mind, I lock my phone and shove it under one of my pillows and will myself to fall asleep. Nostalgia greets me like an old friend. And before my consciousness fades away, I try to chase after the foggy memory that had been plaguing my brain as of late. Those three kids laughing and playing together near a lake. Who were they? And who was the one that stayed right by my side after everyone went home? Desperately, I try to recall their face or any of their defining features. Really, at this point, I'd take anything. The faintest recollection of pudgy cheeks, twin pigtails and a frowning expression swells in my mind, but slips away the moment I drift further into dreamland. Oh, we didn't even get a bad ending here either. That's good. I'm gonna see if there's any other endings that we can get. So, so far we've gotten the bad ending and we've gotten both alternate paths for the good ending. And this time we actually have a little scene that we can get if we refuse to go inside the storage room and just stay where we are. At that, he peers at me with a bored expression before rolling his eyes. Ugh, don't be like that. Come on, Tio, this is a terrible idea. Stupid. You're joking. As much as I want to help you out, I really don't think this is going to accomplish, well, anything. Besides, it doesn't seem fair to Eleanor either. Is that what you really think? Fine, whatever. Should have asked Buttercup to help me instead. Got anything else to add? If not, let's head back. Without another word, Tio drops his hand and walks away, leaving me the trail behind. Hey, Tua. Enjoy your little chat? Sure. Is everything alright? Just peachy. Tio shoots a right glance in my direction, as if to say, See, I told you so. But I brush it off with a sigh. Hey, she's just being nice. Tio, you need... Um, while Eleanor shuffles awkwardly on the balls of her feet, Ren nudges my side and leans closer. Are you alright, Angel? Did Tia do anything to you? No, I'm fine, don't worry about it. You sure? Because if he did... Hmm? No, never mind. At that, Ren takes a step back and looks at my co-worker with a bright smile. S so about that food? Oh, that's right. Thank you for reminding me, Ren. Yeah, I'm sure we'll all start to feel better again once we've had something to eat. I hope you like adobo as much as me. Adobo? Is that foreign? Why yes, it's a dish that mainly features chicken and rice, which I figured would be beneficial for you given your build and all. Interested in my body, are you? Shut up, Tio, but I'll say yes. No! Um, well, yes, technically, but only because I'm concerned about your dietary requirements. You look like the type of person who takes care of their health. And my sister, Kiara, she was the one who introduced this dish to me while she was studying abroad. I really think you'd enjoy the taste. It's one of her top 10 favorite foods. Your sister again. Really? Oh, sure. Whatever you say, princess. Hand it over. Hey, be nice to her. You don't deserve her. You suck. With a groan, I knock my elbow against Tia's arm. Yet all it does is make him give me yet another one of those pointed looks. Um, anyway, here, you know, I bought you the same thing as Ren. I hope that's okay with you. He was telling me all about how much you enjoy scones earlier. Before I can take the takeaway bag from her grasp, Eleanor loops her arm in mine and tugs me away from the group. Ren does not look happy. There's a cheeky grin on her face, which could only mean one thing. But, first, what did you two have to talk about? And there it was. Once my gossipy co-worker got started, there was no holding her back. Um, nothing important. Tia just needed some help with something. Oh, is everything alright now? I watch as Eleanor peers over my shoulder to look at Tia, who was still within earshot. Does he still need help? I can go find another staff member if you- Forget it. This is starting to get real annoying now. Leave her alone! Um, Tio! Uh, um, move. Tio doesn't wait for a response as he shoulders past Ren and makes his way towards one of the exits. Did I say something wrong? No, Nori. Perhaps I should go and apologize. No, you didn't do anything wrong. Here, I'll go and talk to him. You stay here with Ren. Wait! You don't have to, Uni. Before I can follow after Tio, I feel someone tug at the sleeve of my jacket. Ren? You don't have to go after Tio. Just leave him. Maybe you're right, but I know Tia better than everyone here, and I know he's only going to sulk and be a pain about it for the next few days. It's probably best if I do something about it, otherwise we'll just suffer for it later. You guys really don't want to see a mopey Tio. Yeah, I'll come with you then. No, it's okay. You stay here and enjoy the rest of the day with Eleanor. Besides, didn't you two hit it off back at the library? I'm sure she won't mind, right, Elle? Oh, right. Hey, hang on a second, Eleanor. I like you, but you can be with Tio. I want to be with Ren. I hope I didn't bore you to death with all my talk about native flowers. What? I mean, no, no, not at all, but... Angel, did it really look like that to you? Because before Ren can finish his sentence, 
My eyes wander towards Tio's figure slipping through a crowd of people as he pulls out his phone. And before I realize it, my feet start to move on autopilot as I chase after him. Sorry, but I really need to... Oh, he's already gone. Hmm. I'll be back, I promise. Now leaving the two of them behind, I make my way towards the opening of the food court and through the seemingly endless maze of fish tanks. Pushing open the heavy doors to the back entrance, I aimlessly peer down the hallway in search of my grumpy and perhaps even childish friend. My instincts tell me to head towards the hustle and bustle of the main street, but as I round the corner, I bump into someone's chest. Hey, Leon's back! Oh, sorry. I guess I wasn't looking where- Wait. Giddy? Leon! What are you doing here? Uh, I was just about to go- <laughs> Go after Tio. <laughs> it might be best to let him cool off a bit, yeah? I just saw him sulk off in that direction, plus he seemed kind of off in the group chat. There's a group chat? Where's the group chat? I don't see no group chat. Where is it? Yeah, I figured he messaged you guys. Well, actually, he messaged Jay, who then messaged me. But he sent it to the wrong chat, so now here I am. I was on my way back from the hospital anyway. I thought I'd pop in and see what was up. Well, I guess now you know. Yeah, I suppose. But look, seeing as Jay's aware of everything now, maybe it's best to let him handle Tio, yeah? You think so? Leon gives me a non-committal shrug of his shoulders before gesturing for me to follow him. Might help to defuse the situation. I mean, Jay has known him since elementary school, and if he's able to put up with Tia for that long, then I'm sure he'll be a better help than us. Maybe you're right. Still not convinced? If you want to go for a walk and talk to Tia, we can. I don't mind tagging along and... No, it's just... I can't help but feel like this is all somehow my fault. I mean, I know it's not, but... You know how Tio can get, especially when he's told not to do something. Yeah, but I can't help but wonder if I could have been nicer about it. More kind of? No! I didn't think he'd react this way when I told him not to. Nah, I think this is what Tio needs. He doesn't show up, but he's always been coddled by everyone, even his parents. And all those people he hangs out with in the city? Can almost see where he gets his mindset from. But Tio never used to be like this, you know? Back when we were younger. But I guess this is what happens when you've been denied genuine attention for most of your life. Lol, not the subtle roast. He doesn't know how to handle someone telling him no whenever he does something crazy, but it's not entirely his fault. Besides from his questionable friends, Tia also grew up with distant parents. Whenever he wanted affection from them, he'd often have to do something brash just to get their attention. But it never lasted long. They just throw money in his direction and eventually ignore him again. It's pretty sad, honestly. I think all he wants is for someone to acknowledge him for who he is, not how he acts. Well, then maybe he should stop acting like such a wiener. I'm sure you noticed it, right? Everyone wants him for his money, looks, and popularity. I doubt he's got any real friends. You know, besides from us. Oh, and Jay, of course. Outside of our friend group, I doubt Tia surrounds himself with genuine good-hearted people. I bet his mates from the city don't even have his best interests at heart. But, mushy rant aside, I'm glad you're able to be his voice of reason. After everything he's been through, he needs someone like you. Someone who'll stop him from doing things he'll regret later. And to keep him in line whenever he says something insensitive. A true friend. Well, I honestly didn't know that about Tio. Well, that Leon thought me that way, I didn't even know how to respond. Though I guess I didn't need to, considering how Leon continued to talk. But enough about him. Jay's on his way back from the city now, so we should leave Mr. Moody to him. Besides, with a grin, Leon tosses an arm over my shoulder and pulls me onto the street. I'm sure Ren is watching and that he doesn't like that. <laughs> I want to spend some time with you. I think it's long overdue, yeah? I never even got to go on that aquarium date with you guys. Oh no, how dreadful. It truly is a heartbreaking thought. I don't think I'll be able to go on. My heart yearns to be by your side, but alas, it was not meant to be. Alright, let's go theater kid. <laughs> what gave it away? With a playful eye roll, I nudge my childhood friend with my hip to get him moving again. But what takes me by surprise is how he casually grabs my hand in his and leads me down the street. Uh-oh. The zombies feels like old times, back when we used to run hand in hand towards our favorite playground after school. I wonder. Was Leon thinking the same thing as me? But when I glance upward to check, I instead take notice of the destination my companion was leading me towards. After all, the massive umbrella made it hard to miss. A soft smile pulls at my features from the nostalgic sight before me, and I give Leon's hand a gentle squeeze to let him know about my excitement. I can feel him do the same to my hand in return, which only makes my grin grow even wider. An ice cream stand, huh? Yeah, it's been a while since we visited one of those, hasn't it? That's true. I wonder if they still sell all those wacky flavors. Did you just call my favorite flavor wacky? I can't believe it. Why? I would never. Oh really? Do you even remember what it is? Duh, it's mint choc chip. Neapolitan? You got it. See, I knew you'd remember it. I never doubted you for a second, doll. How could I forget? The only reason it's your favorite is because it has like three flavors in one. You know what? You know what I found out? Like a year and a bit ago? Rainbow ice cream, which is a very popular thing in Australia. I don't know if it's like popular anywhere else, but I thought they were different flavors 
but it's just vanilla ice cream that's been dyed. My whole life I've lived a lie. I found out and nothing's ever been the same ever since and that makes me sad. Where? Anyway, how could I forget? Exactly. And all for the same price as one too. That's kind of cheating, isn't it? Oh yeah? Sounds more like jealousy to me. Oh please. Don't worry. I wouldn't mind sharing my ice cream with you. Germs too. Ew, gross. Gross? <laughs> anyway, now it's your turn. Huh? Oh, are you gonna guess? Of course I am. It's only fair. Also because I remember your favorite flavor too. Is that so? I mean, as long as it hasn't changed over the years. No, it's still the same. Then. There was no way he was gonna guess it correctly. Now that I think about it, what is my favorite ice cream flavor? I should probably have one in mind before he guesses. Okay, so my favorite ice cream flavor is by this ice cream place in Australia. It's a chain called Messina, and it is a salted mango and coconut uh, gelato. So it's like coconut ice cream with like a mango syrup ribbon mixed throughout, but the mango's got a little bit of sea salt in it, and it's really good. But just as I think of my answer, Leon speaks it into existence with a knowing toothy grin. The ringing of his laughter drowns out the ending of his response, but I heard him clear as day. And did you... Sunfish, I think it's time I told you. I'm a mind reader. <laughs> Whoa, what number am I thinking of right now? Uh, four? No, 60? 4.60? <laughs> what? That's such a specific number. Yeah, well, that's how much we owe this fine gentleman. With a smile, he gestures towards the person who served us ice cream. Not wanting to make people wait in line any longer, I fish out the loose change Leon gave me earlier and pay for our desserts. Seemingly satisfied, we make our way down the footpath to find somewhere to sit and eat. This is nice, I haven't hung out with my friend in a while. Eventually, Leon leads me to a nearby park where we plop down on one of the benches and kick up our feet. We spend a long while just chatting and catching up on each other with the things that happen in our lives during our time apart. And soon enough, all of our ice cream is gone and the sun was slowly beginning to set. A comfortable silence blankets the both of us. Leon casually throws his arm behind his head and closes his eyes. He seems at peace like this, almost as if the stress of his day-to-day -day had been stripped away. But even with Leon's eyes closed, I couldn't help but feel like someone, or something, was watching me. Ran? An eerie feeling washes over me, and I cast a hesitant glance over my shoulder to spot anything out of place. Nothing but the gentle rustle of foliage and the wind greets me, and yet I couldn't seem to shake off the lingering feeling of someone hiding behind one of the bushes. What if it was my... Ugh. Just as I was finally starting to relax and unwind again, I went and ruined it all by getting worked up once more. Quietly slapping my cheeks, I try to expel those thoughts from my mind, but the sound I made must have been louder than it felt because Leon's golden eyes soon blink open to look in my direction. <laughs> Sorry, almost dozed off there. It's so peaceful out here, I could probably fall asleep. Whoa, check that out. I follow Leon's finger towards the sky, only to notice ominous dark clouds rolling from the distance. You're kidding. Was it seriously about to start raining again? But now that I look closer, do clouds normally get that dark? Even from afar, it almost looks like black smoke enveloping some of the taller buildings in the heart of Colum Bay. Ran? It almost seemed unnatural. All too quickly, the soft timber of Leon's voice cuts through my thoughts. As fun as today has been, we should probably head back before it starts pissing down buckets, yeah? Here, I'll walk you home. He offers a hand to help me up from the bench, but just as I take it, I hear a twig snapping from somewhere behind me. But before I can react, the muted sound of thunder cuts me off. Thanks, Leon, but your place is in the opposite direction, isn't it? I wouldn't want to make you walk all the way back. Nah, it'll be fine. I don't mind walking. What if it starts raining? A little rain never hurt anyone. Something tells me it won't be a little bit of rain. Actually, uh, you may be right. Me? Being right? Could it be? What date is it? Is there a blue moon? Oh, knock it off. <laughs> but hey, you sure you don't want me to walk you home? I'm sure. Besides, I could use some alone time. The past few days have been hectic, to say the least. Yeah, well, so as long as you don't stress yourself out or anything. If you need a vent, you know who to call. Tio? <laughs> Despite saying that I'd be perfectly fine walking home on my own, Leon ended up accompanying me to the entrance of my apartment complex before finally parting ways. It was nice being able to catch up with him like this. I genuinely find myself wondering if we could do it again in the future. But as I make my way towards the door, my eyes wander towards the small box sitting atop the doormat. What the? Panic flashes through me, I thought of it being another gift from my supposed stalker, but then I remember the purchase I made this morning. Ah, that must be the security cameras. Deftly picking it up, I put it under my arm and fish for my keys in one of my pockets, but as I do so, I barely make out the sound of something behind me. Muffled footsteps echo from somewhere down the stairwell, indicating that someone was there, and that they were getting close. The thought alone sends a surge of panic through my body as I tense up. Was that? I desperately try to ignore the sudden dread of anxiety building up as my hand fumbles to unlock the door. Just a few more twists and clicks on my key before- uh, Angel, I'm glad I caught you- Ren! Jeez, you almost gave me a heart attack! Huh? 
Oh, sorry. It's fine. Um, what are you doing here? Stealing my nerves. I try to calm down my rapid heartbeat and meet Ren's gaze. As nice as it was to hang out with Leon, I missed you, Ren. There's a flicker of worry in his eyes, but it all fades away the moment he takes a step closer to me. And everything's fine now. I know you were upset and that's why there was black smoke being summoned, but you can put it all away now. It's fine. So I try to calm down my rapid heartbeat and meet Ren's gaze. There's a flicker of worry in his eyes, but it all fades away the moment he takes a step closer to me. I don't suppose you're missing something, are you? I try to recount all the things I've been carrying around today, but when nothing comes to mind, Ren shoots me a bright smile and pulls something from behind his back. Oh, my phone! And our food from earlier! <laughs> <laughs> I figured you didn't have dinner yet, so I also added something extra in there as well. As if realizing how suspicious his words sounded, Ren's cheeks immediately flush a deep red as he backtracks and stutters out a response. A, a dessert. It's a dessert. I bought it on the way here. You, you don't have to eat it though. You are so cute. Oh? Peering into the bag still being held tightly in Ren's grasp, I noticed the food. An adorable angelfish plushie and... Was that a small cup? Of salted mango and coconut ice cream sitting on top. Oh, Ren, you just know the exact way to my heart, dropping pants. Before I can stoop any further, his soft voice interrupts my train of thoughts. Actually, your co worker seemed really worried about you, too. She wanted to be the one to drop these off, but something came up. What? His expression changed when he says something came up. What came up? What happened? As for your phone, you left it in the storage closet. Yeah. Oh, as I'm noticing my current predicament, Ren looks at my occupied arms before giving me another soft smile. It'd be nice to have more hands sometimes, huh? Need some help? It's fine, I think I got it. Just when I think my door is unlocked, I somehow lose my grip around the parcel in my hands. But luckily, Ren catches it just in time before handing it and everything else back to me. S say, that sure is heavy. Um, without obvious Ren's gaze was, I could tell that he wanted to ask what was inside it. Surely there wouldn't be anything wrong with telling him. Oh, I bought a security system this morning. But because of how shady this neighborhood is, I figured it'd be a good idea to be safer than sorry. That creep didn't come back, did they? Okay, so I think, yeah, we've already gotten this before. Yeah, he just... And then we can accept and let him stay the night. And then he asks to be a roommate. Yeah, it's just the same ending. And then just gets you the good end. And that is all of the endings in day 4 of 14 Days With You. Thank you so much for enjoying the story with me. I have missed Ren so much. I'm so glad we got to play this. I love this chapter a lot. It's kind of scary, but it seems like he's testing the waters and testing to see how far and how much of his true personality he can actually reveal to you. Which is why he said the said the joke about killing Tio and also admitting that he threatened to push Olivia. I think he's like pushing to see how much he can actually do. Which is very, very interesting and very scary. Also, additionally, the black smoke and the mentions of him going like, oh wait, but I haven't even used like this yet is very, very good. It because we're finally getting little pops of him being able to use his powers even more so. And it's very interesting. Also, I think this is the first time we've actually heard him mention the entity that is inside of him as well. It'll be very, very intriguing because I know that on the Tumblr, it mentions that he's got his fake persona that he's using to attract you at the moment. And also his true persona and the existence of um him as like Rendacted, which is like his true self. So... I wonder like how that's going to play out in future chapters, but I love this so much. Thank you so much for sticking around my 14 days with you series. The series is very, very special to me because it was like one of the first I started when I started YouTube this year. I always love playing this game with you guys and I really appreciate it. But if you guys like this video though, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. And if you want to hang out outside of these videos, I stream on Twitch three times a week for free to come over and hang out. But that's all for now. Thank you so much again. I appreciate you guys so, so, so much. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.